Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture. Of course, I am the boy, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB, the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie. Chine Du, Love Island's newest fan, <laughs> Armand Sadler. I'm not here alone. I'm here with the gang, the House of Dragons crew. What's yeah, good, y'all? I got to work. On my little intro, but you know, <laughs> I, I can't know wait to finally on. hear it. Y'all know what's going on. I'm gonna finally get it right one episode. Mm-hmm. But your girl Two V's here. <laughs> what's good? Y'all know how we do. It's well. Good to have y'all as always. Um, of course, make sure you all subscribe to the YouTube channel for all visual episodes or your favorite audio platform for all audio episodes. Leave a like, a comment, share it, rate it. All the things that you can do on all the different platforms. It means a lot to us. It does a lot for the show. And yeah, we just really appreciate that. And of course, Patreon, uh, the podcast OnlyFans, patreon.com backslash stay busy pod. We had a very open and honest discussion about our problematic faves, people's problematic faves, how we engage with their content. I thought it was a really fun talk. Um, and it's good to just be honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we're, we're all humans. We all want to come off perfect and blah, blah. But hey, man. Some of us be, be, be liking some stuff that other people might give us problems for liking. And it's okay. It is A-OK. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Only God could judge me anyway, so fuck y'all. And but- I have to go on a Patreon <laughs> to find out the tea, because I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Wild and snitch on us. But um, before we jump into our new music chat, instead of a whether you like, I saw an interesting question on Twitter this week that I wanted to pose to you all. So the person wrote, what song is slash are Drake's signature songs, if you could only name two. Think Beyonce, Single Ladies, Crazy in Love, Michael Jackson, Thriller, Billie Jean, Rihanna, Umbrella, Nicki Minaj, Super Bass. Although Super Bass, I don't know if I'd call that Nicki's signature song. But essentially, the the explanation was a signature Mm. song isn't something you personally like. It's a song that's basically synonymous Mm. with the artist. The song you would name if someone said they didn't know who the artist was, and you say, oh, he sings X, Y, Z, and they would recognize the song. So right. for Drake, what would those songs be for y'all? That's tough. Right. That's actually crazy. Um, Long career. <laughs> I was about to say, it's so many eras I'm, yeah. I'm thinking through right now. And I know for me, like, Signature isn't necessarily, like, I, I understand their angle of it being recognizable, but I also think right. of, like, their style of music. Right. Like, what is the most descriptive or displays, like, the way that person makes music. Cause like if I were to go most recognizable, I would go like God's plan, um, one dance or best I ever had. But mm. then if I were to go like his style, mm. I would go a song like mm. come through or I would go a song right. like club paradise, or I would go a song like even more recently, like drew a Picasso. So Damn. there's like different ways to look at it, but yeah, I would, I would love to hear y'all. Y'all thoughts? Shit. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm just like, I'm thinking like... The woman was too stunned to speak. <laughs> yeah, I'm I just told thinking... I putting you on I'm the spot. thinking <laughs> now, Dang. like, yeah, I'm thinking even like... I'm trying to like break it down in my brain. Like, okay, like, okay, what album... Like, right. I, feel, I feel like something has to be from I'm thinking about views. Take Care. And I think mm-hmm. something has to be from take there. Care, absolutely. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, something has to be from... He has such a mm. long career. Because he was a rap star until like 2015. Then he became a pop global icon. Right, because so even when like, you said God's plan, I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to say, like, personally, I want to say, like, mm, I want to say, like, Miss Me. Like, okay. early, like, maybe, like, yeah. first half of his career, like, Miss Me with, yeah. with Wayne. But see, like, I feel like that's my fan talking because I love the song. Me too. But at the same time, I just. I feel like that song was a moment. It was in time absolutely. for his career. I remember when the, uh, the original version leaked with the, with the different hook. Bro, right. I, was, I was running that Come up, and then when on, I got bro. the album version, I was like, "Oh, they changed it." Yeah. But it's cool too. Still, like, yeah. So, and then I feel like something 
Something has to be from. They said only two songs. Um, two songs. Like, yeah, it's like. They uh, said is slash R, so that's. You can, you can go multiple. Yeah, so, so it like, will have to be one from each era, to be honest. Yeah. So the debut era will be Best I Ever Had. Mm. Breakout single. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Then we got. Yeah. The next album's Take Care, right? Mm-hmm. That shit is tough. Like, I almost went Marvin's Room, but. Let me see. I don't know. I don't know. Like, what? Marvin's Room is up there. I think in terms of, like, signature style, I don't know if it's most recognizable. Like, I don't know if the the, the entire world... What was the song he had the girl dancing the dancing in the uh, mirror, the whole the whole video, and he walks in at the last time? Uh, like, Work? Nah. Motto. He was the on motto. Take Care. <sighs> Motto's Motto up there. was on Take Care. Like, they still play that shit in the club, and I'm like, can y'all stop? I'm, I'm, they I'm do, they do play Motto, motto from a lot. Mm. What's going on? Do you want to hit the thing? <laughs> Don't you want to fill up? <laughs> Um, yeah, but see. damn, because Take Care was, like, the era he also got the most <sighs> criticism, too. That that was, like, yeah, because Thank Me Later got a pretty lukewarm reception, and then Take Care was the one niggas I, was like, I, oh, I, nah. Yeah, yeah I think he's take, here. He's yeah, him. Take Care was the one that was... Shit, even the song Take Care, like, right. is debatably up there. Right. Headlines, more of that, like, triumphant yes. statement yes. Oh, music. Cam- cameras, good ones go. Cameras, oh that's I, a personal favorite. Cameras Honestly. is what I would put in the signature style column. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's 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 a tough question, and that's, that's why what, for me, oof. I was just like, for, yeah, Drake, I, oh my god, look yeah. what you've done. Yeah, take. I mean, like he's still making hits. <laughs> yeah. Still rebranding, so I it's feel like, like you definitely need something from the from the like era where he's making one dancing controller and stuff absolutely. like that too. Yeah, that's and he, those those songs will be mentioned. That's when he became a pop icon. Um, yeah. Nothing was the same. My favorite album. Mm. Definitely Facts. gotta name something on that. I almost said "Hold On, We're Going Home." Oh. Like, and I almost said "Hotline Bling." Yeah, yeah. Um, damn. we should we should sit with this one for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll come back to this because we got a quite a hefty chat to get into. Yeah. But shit, speaking of Drake, so uh, <laughs> this week we got some tweets from Schoolboy Q. He was supposed to perform. He's currently touring. He was supposed to open his tour in Toronto. But things kind of went awry. His first tweet was, they just canceled my show in Toronto. Laughing emoji. Canadian police don't want nobody from TDE performing. All caps. Uh, next tweet was, top was just what Wayne and baby shaking my head. Party next door just had a show at the uh, Palladium, Palladium, whatever, however it's pronounced. Right. Um, if we wanted to get y'all, we would have just did it. <laughs> now, now when somebody get hurt, don't cry. And then uh, his last tweet was, actually, I get it. Never mind. This shit low-key hilarious. I don't know why Dot put me in that fucking video. He also had a little back and forth with DJ Academics. Because DJ Academics said the beef is over. Praying love and peace, blah, blah, blah. And Schoolboy Q was like, I'm, I'm not. I ain't threatening to kill nobody, blah, blah, All that. So it started out just announcing the show was canceled. And then he essentially intimated that Drake might have had something to do with it. We later learned that Drake owned the venue. That's cool what you was set to perform at. Um, and there was also flooding in Toronto, too, which, like, we saw Drake, the video of Drake's house. Like, he was like, yo, is this espresso martini on my floor? Because it was, like, orange water on the ground. And, um, yeah, those, and then you think about Ross getting jumped in Canada, too, and the, the possibility of an artist who's affiliated with someone who's beefing with Drake right now possibly having violence happen to them. So there's a lot of different layers to the situation. How did y'all feel seeing those tweets? Well, what do y'all think of... Drake possibly like using his political stroke in Canada to stop niggas who are affiliated with people he's beefing with from performing in his country. As he should. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I seen somebody say, I seen somebody say to death, I think maybe it's Elliot Wilson or somebody, but yeah, the beef is never going to be over. Like, it's going to mm-hmm. be smoked 24-7. Yeah. Right. And, like, yeah, like, I, I don't see, like, if he... You're not performing at a venue I own. The, uh, yeah. Facts. Right when I found out he owned Jesus. it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's my, like, yeah. That's a dub. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Find Get out, venue. nigga. Yeah, right. like, sorry. This yeah. sounds right <laughs> up the alley of a nigga who calls himself the Petty King. Yeah. Like, you, you beat me with the music, you got niggas yeah. calling me a pedophile. This is the only thing I could do. You are not coming to my city <laughs> <Not>. <laughs> or my country. Some shit I own, too? In, some shit I own. Yeah, and if you do get in, I, I can't be blamed for what niggas might want to do to you. So don't, do not come. Yeah, bro. This really didn't shock me don't too come much. Up here. <laughs> but um, I do understand Schoolboy Q's angle about mm-hmm. like 
you know, Top was just with Baby and Wayne. It's mm. like, but we don't know Wayne don't give a fuck about nothing. Yeah, like... He don't care. You weren't beefing... Like, even though Wayne and Baby have a certain loyalty to Drake, they also just do their own thing. Like, they grown. They're not... Grown as well. Like, I don't... Like, I, if they would have been affected by the beef and, like, angry, they, they would have said something or done something. Especially and baby. both them niggas was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we saw Lil Wayne perform in the motto, and he, like, quoted Not Like Us, but he was showing off his OVO chain. Like, that's that's the most, like, Wayne is going to do about this. He's not going to jump in and rap on Drake's behalf because Drake's his, his own man. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So And the most he's going to do is double down in an interview and be like, Drake is the GOAT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> And and they were with Party Next Door. Granted, Party Next Door is under OVO, but like, yeah. what's an R and B nigga gonna do? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> don't get it twisted. You remember verses? Yeah, like, don't get it twisted. <laughs> that was the funniest part of, <laughs> of the beef gangster. to me. Was like, oh my god, niggas are like, yo, where are all the OVO niggas at? I'm like, you want Roy Woods to sing something for, for Drake? You want Division to? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, he on his own. He on, on his own yeah, with yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It, it just it was an it was funny, but it was also like, all right, like you you're putting this idea out there, you're talking about top shit and put me in the video. You you your own man. You 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 could have not been in the video yourself. Like you, yeah, him saying like, that is kind of. I think what he meant was that he just didn't expect for like. The pettiness. Oh, the fallout. The fallout to be this crazy. Yeah, like he's just on some like, all right, it's done. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just what he meant, especially you know in light of recent events, Mm -hmm. you know the link ups. But you know, now he knows. Yeah, now he know. It's war, man. It's war. (laughs) So yeah, so I just thought that was pretty funny. Um, That wasn't as annoying as the next thing we're going to get into. So. Uh, Team USA is playing right now. LeBron, Steph Curry, all of them, they're getting ready for the Olympics. And we saw footage. Uh, Steph Curry got was walking onto the court, not like us was playing. Steph Curry was like, yo, there's other songs in America. And LeBron was like, I love it. <laughs> and people were giving so many reactions to Steph Curry, like being tired of this song. And then Jermaine Dupri did a whole reaction video, <laughs> and he was like, yo, like, you know, you're just, you don't know what it's like to see a song impacting the streets, blah, blah, all this. And like, my first thing is, though, Steph Curry is like 35 years old. Like, right, he, he knows. he's been around for hits. He, he was around for your golden run. Like, and his name is mentioned in so many hits. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> that too. Oh, God. Like, bro. do, do oh, you think God, Steph Curry bro. doesn't know what a hit is? Like, what? Like, I'm so Steph that was, Curry. Yeah. Curry with the shot. He has boy. felt impact in his lifetime. Mm-hmm. But, um, I, I don't know. I thought it was funny. And I thought LeBron's reaction was funnier. Like, he's just like me, because that's me. <laughs> like, I feel I like, <laughs> yeah, I love it. I feel like it's the first time every time I hear that shit. Like, especially the wop, wop, wop. That part mm. never gets tired. Yeah. yeah. But what this did bring about was a very annoying conversation. Now, remember, you, you, Will, you were here, Mr. Bees, you watched when Carrie was here. I sat and I told y'all, Kendrick Lamar earned his victory lap. He can do whatever he wants Indeed. right now. Mm-hmm. The fans are the ones milking this shit. The fans are the problem. So Steph Curry's reaction had people saying, um, oh, like, y'all don't like the song because it's coming at Drake, or y'all don't know what a hit is. Like, let me ask y'all something. Think of, like, the most real... Name me the most recent hit y'all, y'all have heard that you got tired of. All of them. <laughs> yeah, all of them. Like, yeah. like, do any particular songs come to mind, though? Like, no? When I say all of them, mm-hmm. like... Pound Town, mm. um, don't play with it, mm. like all of them. This is actually the only one that I haven't gotten tired of. Mm-hmm. Ironically, maybe because I'm fueled by hate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, but I guess I did get sick of Pound Town for real, for mm-hmm. real. Like Pacific one, Pound yeah. Town. I got sick. Of, I was like, oh, okay. But like, and nah, and nah, I ain't gonna hold you. No shade. Sorry, Will. When they do a whole slizzy set in the party, I'll be like, all right. <laughs> Hasta cuando? Like, cut the shit. I could how only, many, I could how only. Many, only yeah, for so how long. Many times, like, come okay. on. Okay, so like the recent party, what, how, many so, how many how many songs do they play in a row? They like five? Once they got to Not My Problem, I said, look at the yeah, demo here. Yeah, because These it, people don't even know this shit. And then he played Kaylani still. And I was like, God oh my damn God. it. Who was DJ in Gosby? I don't know, but I wish I had tomato. Oh my god, you are funny as hell. Because I was like, shit. all right, nah. Like, that nah, shit. Niggas be OD in it. That is making me a little tired of it. But 
I would admit, like when it comes on and it drops like randomly, yeah. and I'm like already cool, lit. It'd be like, hey, right, f- f- Fisher and attitude, I'm always with. You feel me? And play the like, play the main ones, yeah, and then, and then, then they, don't do the whole set. And if you're gonna do a set, you could do a whole vibes cartel set. Mm. I'm just saying. There we go. But my my question was more so to get to the point, like getting tired of hits is not a rare thing. No, people get tired of hits all the time. So it's annoying to see people try and tell people either they don't know what a hit is or why they're tired of not like us. It is very rational, understandable, realistic for people to get tired of something that is playing all the time, especially when you fans are forcing it with the not like us game, tweeting the lyrics every day, (laughs) all this different shit y'all are doing. Like y'all are the problem. Y'all are ruining oh, not not like us is shelf life. Again, I I, I want to remind y'all. I mm. like the song a lot. I dance to it. I rap to it when I'm out. Even though certain lines might sting sometimes, I rap to it when I'm out. I have a blast with the song. But y'all are being very like like it's almost like y'all y'all forgot what a hit is and how people respond to hits. Like popular music isn't popular ubiquitously. It's not popular unanimously. There's not a widespread consensus about it. Niggas, some niggas hate hits immediately. Yeah. And the other people take time and they're like, eh, I don't niggas, need to hear that no more. Niggas love being contrarians, man. Bro, you you, you remember you remember um you remember summer they love, of uh, niggas love to and shit like that man. just to be like, yeah. Actually, I'm gonna stand over here. But I mean, hey, like like but but everyone is entitled to how they feel. And and it feels like the people who love that song are like, nah, and like you have to love it or like if you don't love it, there's I told these you, bro. For I it. told you, bro. It's a lot of niggas that are dropping anime, anime, and like samurai quotes mm-hmm. and, and and swords, yeah. talking about not like us and the the victory and the warrior of of, the, of or the boogeyman and whatever Kanvu Kenyi, which is cool, yeah. which is fire. But it's, it's it's just like niggas have lost all sense of nuance and duality with <laughs> regards to this song. Armand. Kendrick Lamar earned Yo, his victory lap. You sick. niggas. He's, sick. he's like, listen, I, Bro. I'm dead ass. If y'all, when y'all watch this, look the way, look, look at the way he's looking at the camera right I now. I feel like Maul from um, New Rory and Maul when, when he did that rant. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, Mister Lamar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but nah, for real, because no, it's, huh? no, it's honestly getting, it's getting so annoying that like people are having a hard time comprehending. Yo, maybe someone just doesn't like this song as much as you do. Someone can get tired of this song. You know It's what? amazing. It's popular. It's number one. Video's great. <laughs> Concert was great. All that shit. Awesome. Tens across the board. Tens across awesome. The board. But everything, uh, all good things must come to an end. You, know? you remember the summer of LMA boot up? Mm-hmm. We, we was rocking that shit. And uh, it's a, you probably hated it immediately, didn't you? No. Okay. I got tired of it. You got tired? Okay. And that's Because okay. as soon as you said it, I immediately <laughs> remembered. But I ain't going to front. Shout out to Jacquees. Because yeah. he yeah. extended the shelf life for that shit. Smoke that. Smoke that. Uh, well, Smoke that did, 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 did he remix Trip, right? Oh, yeah. He remixed Trip. Oh, yeah. Trip, Trip. It's okay. Same difference. Same, Because Trip was pretty big, too. But we could go sicko mode. Bodak Yellow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Motherfucking, um, uh, um, damn. All of them. You know what? You know what? The All of them. Work control and one dance. I'll never be tired of. You the, right. Those three. You right. But one dance. I got. I. You know what you I got me thinking about one. now? You know what y'all got me thinking about now, bro? Like a year from now, or like two years from now, whatever. The nostalgia going back on this song, the oh, way people course. are going to talk about it, is going to be like. That's the best part. Like, bro, <laughs> it's going to be nuts. Like, it's it's going to be like niggas thriller. And, and it, it's so it's so rap. crazy to think about because you're right. It literally within a year's time, like you could be in a moment and a song you hear it every day is fire. Then you get tired of it. And then hits or big songs come so often that like stuff gets lost in the shuffle. So then, again, like you said, a year from now, you, you might hear attitude and you're like, oh, shit. Yo, that was my shit in 20... Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. This was mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. was a heater. Goddamn. Like, mm-hmm. this was... People was talking about this was possibly song in the summer. Mm-hmm. And now I don't hear it anymore. So mm-hmm. it's refreshing to hear. All that to say, like, when this is oh this not God. like us conversation, the lack of critical thinking, the lack of... Ju- <sighs> it's, <laughs> it's... I scored a 21 on the game. 
for real. Wow. Yeah, they said that was the difficult level. So mm. to you. Damn. Mm-hmm. It's impressive. Yeah. What, what what what's the actual like gameplay? Like like what So you didn't click it? Fuck no. Did you see Come they but did you see the day they just dropped a family matters? Yeah, game? I, I just saw that. I'm like, yo, this is getting Ooh. this is getting out of hand. Drake's people. This is getting out of hand, bro. <laughs> well, Drake fans, I should go. Allegedly. It's getting Allegedly. out of hand. Yeah, it's, it's out of hand. It's, but, it's, yeah. it's too much. It's too they much. dropped a game where you're trying to kick the Kick um, the Grammy into Kendrick Lamar's mouth. That's nuts. Pause. That's nuts. Y'all pretty y'all, much saying he's he, he's 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 tricking for, he's tricking for a I Grammy. Play that one. Y'all have siblings. It's crazy. You trying to kick it to his mouth. Y'all are Kendrick sick. Love in his mouth. Fuck no. <laughs> oh my god. That's what it. Oh yeah. Kendrick so Love in his mouth. Grammy right now. <laughs> oh my. They just went crazy. The game is they nuts. They did. I don't need to the play game that is shit nuts. Seven. Holy shit. I'm not playing that either. The game in the okay, okay. They ate that. They ate that. They went crazy. <laughs> but to, just to like, because we we found a new way to talk about this every day, and I I get it. I truly get it. Like it, it's a topic that's going to go on for quite some time. But Sorry. my nigga, just like use your brains. Just think. If you enjoy the song, awesome. Love it. You don't gotta tell niggas why they don't love it. Force it on like all. Oh, it's too much. It's too much. People are not using their brain. No. No. Kendrick is open well, What little critical <laughs> thinking they have? <laughs> Niggas not using it. I just be trying my best to ignore the noise, honestly, because I'm trying to beat the angry black woman allegations. And I get <sighs> agitated easily. The, the thing is, the, the <laughs> noise. You said that multiple me. times, too. Do you okay. really think you're that angry? Get goddamn butt. No, I'm I just sorry. get agitated. Like people really be so stupid. Like they don't use their brain. It is so frustrating. And it's I hate tough. thinking for people. Yeah, that's hard. And and that's the other <sighs> thing. Like it, I've gotten better at letting people be stupid. But when I see something that is just like completely just devoid of logic, I'm just like, it is real. Like no way you think like this. How did all your neurons come together? <laughs> and then I felt that your prefrontal cortex decided, <clears throat> yeah. This is this is the take, yep. and then it's gonna come out. I'm going to yep. open my phone, unlock it, Face ID, open Twitter, type this take, yep. publicize it as if it's correct. Even like how, how, how did that, that process on different happen? Platforms, they'll do yeah. it on Twitter, oh, then IG stories. Yeah, then oh, shit. it'd be a lot, bro. Oh shit, like, mm-hmm. we're 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 so we're, we're, we're hopeless. Fucked. We're hopeless. <laughs> we're hopeless. But I'll I'll move on because I'm I'm obviously getting a little worked up. Um, but <laughs> so. Miss uh Miss Isis Gaston, Ice Spice Jesus. dropped the track list for the forthcoming Y two K. That that's coming this week. Um, ten song album. Is ten, is ten songs an album to y'all? Yeah. Yeah. At this point. This, yeah. This yeah. Okay. I say ten to twelve. Did y'all expect her to to do do any more than ten? No. Mm. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't have no expectation on track list number. Mm. To be honest. Because gotcha. she's probably gonna do a deluxe anyways. Definitely. Right. So. It's well, probably gonna be like a fifteen total. We have heard four of these songs already. We heard "Fat Butt." We heard. <laughs> well, I, I hate that you laugh every time because, <laughs> because the way you say it. Because the way you butt. be saying it. That's fat like, butt. It's like the first one you went like into. You like you could have named any other songs. Bro, it's <laughs> the first one I saw. I'm looking at the track list. Said, I'm pretty said, sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure fat that's butt. That that's the opening record. I'm trying and to go the way in order. You said it too. Like you made the ph just like hit like, <laughs> like fat you just butt. Smacked mm-hmm. Like just smacked like, like, past like like it just went past. All right now. Anyway, like she right. was in, like she was in the room and she just walked past. You said fat butt. <laughs> like you calling her? <laughs> nah, bro. You seen that thing? But anyways, uh, so fat butt uh, did it first with Central C. Thank you, the shit fart. Give me a light. We've heard those already. So we've heard four out of the ten songs. Some of the new songs that we'll hear is. Oh shh with Travis Scott, bitch I'm packing with Gunna. Mm. Um, another one, Papa, BB Belt, and TTYL. So, feelings on the selections of features in Travis Scott, Gunna, and Central C. Gunna is always gonna ride for the girls. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear yeah. that. I probably go to that track first. Um, you don't listen to albums in order. We we heard most of it, so. Yeah, and it's only 10. I, you know what? That goes back to the original question, right? But, you know, we're we're in that cusp of generations mm-hmm. where we have, like, tradi- we consumed music traditionally, like, mm-hmm. via CDs and streaming. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. I mm-hmm. usually do listen in order, but I'm not going to listen to that one in order now. I don't know if I trust you. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> 
She's honest. Yeah. Can't be mad at it. Um, <laughs> Will, your thoughts on Travis and Gunna being the the selected features? I think it's um it's very very interesting and fire that she has a Travis Scott feature. Mm. Um, I seen recently that. He brought her out at a show overseas in Europe. Um, they were at Wireless Fest. Oh, Wireless? Yeah. And they and she, he, yeah, so I saw them performing together. Apparently um, her set was really good, too. Like, yeah. People said she's not performing over the backing vocals anymore. Like, yeah. a little bit of choreography. I was like, okay. Yeah, I, I mean. Stepping up? Yeah. Having a Travis Scott feature on there, a Gunner feature, Central C, the one we already heard already, which is it's a decent song. I haven't yeah, heard it outside. Good. I like it. But, it's yeah, it's, it, 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 it's a good song. Yeah. Um, 10 is... I think 10 is, like, low-key perfect for her, like, short and sweet. Digestible. Um, it's about to be, like, 28 minutes, you know? <laughs> Yeah, like, it's going to be it's gonna be short and sweet, st- straight to the point. Yeah. Um, I feel like people are either going to love it or hate it. Mm-hmm. It's not going to, I don't know if it's going to be in the, like, in between, like, ah, I kind of like it. I feel like people are going to either be like, damn, this was actually pretty good, or, like, I never want to hear this again. Right. So, um, I don't know. I'm interested. Yeah, this the this type of track list feels very much so like the you're about to be a superstar type track mm-hmm. list. Mm-hmm. So we're putting you next to the other stars slash superstars. Mm-hmm. I'm glad they didn't overwhelm us with the typical soon to be superstar track list that has the little baby, the little Dirk, the twenty one. That like, I was done. Yeah, like Travis and Gunna is more than enough. I could have done without Travis, but I am interested in what an Same. Ice Spice Travis song yeah, it's just will interesting. sound like. like what? Yeah. yeah, it better not sound like that water remix. All I know. Oh yeah, I I highly doubt that. I, I don't know. Like, who yeah, I mean, like, that. what if they make some like real like turnt rager shit, like some like shit, like I just don't know what it could sound like. Yeah. Like, what could it be like if yeah. they make like a a stadium banger? Like, what mm-hmm. like what happens then? Like, it'll be it'll be interesting. Shit. The, 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 like, that'd be crazy. The gutter one I can imagine because a uh, gangster boo with little TJ like that. Mm-hmm. That sounds. Like I love something. that one. It's a good mm-hmm. song. Really yeah. good song. Like mm-hmm. that sounds like. Within the wheelhouse, she could add a gunner to that, or they could do even something, something sexier. Yeah, like... exactly, exactly. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna be that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so very interested. You so know, I, I I do love that she didn't overwhelm us with features. Three out of ten is great. Um, mm-hmm. you know? it's actually perfect because, like, if you look back at some of her older projects, like, uh, did, uh off the last one, uh, she had bad issues showing up at Delhi. Delhi was like one of the biggest songs from her last. Uh, the, it was the deluxe of like, mm-hmm. and then. What was the other joints? I'm already forgetting. Uh, the shit she added Nikki to the remix on, but it was her at first. Uh, Princess Diana. Princess yeah. Diana. Like she, she could make strong solo records. So, yeah. uh, I'm, and those are the ones I'm always interested in the most when I see these big name features. Like you know what they can do. Gonna she really. Go ahead. She, my bad. Oh, I was just thinking. I mean, she really be making like women bangers mm-hmm. like consistently consistently yeah. like, i was just thinking about delhi and then i was thinking about that and then i was thinking about even the barbie movie song with yeah, Nikki. that barbie shit world. that's notable nigga that shit Smoochie, when that shit comes like, on that shit is yeah, a movie real notable like was a really good project. that shit is a like, movie like, bro she, she, yeah she kind of didn't miss on that joint so, so i can see her definitely um, making a, a she might make a stadium banger with travis or some shit bro like who yeah. knows like, i saw this, people I saw people criticizing the marketing because, you know, they're like Y2K and Mm -hmm. they thought she had like a phone in front of the mirror selfie and stuff. But Mm -hmm. it was really a digital camera (laughs) and she linked up with Paris Hilton. But I saw that. Yeah. You know, I just I think her birthday is like January 1st, 2000. 2000 facts right on the dot. I don't think people realize like that she's probably leaning more into that and Mm -hmm. trying to tell like her story as opposed to like being like you know having that y2k sound yeah, i mean yeah. she does dress like the y2k but that's like what's in right now everyone's yeah. doing that shit yeah and yeah. it'll be interesting to see if she really opens up and lets people know more about her because like you said weeks ago she's very private very and private. i think that's the next that's the next step level sure. of her artistry is letting people in a bit more we, we know you could flex we know you could talk about being a baddie yeah mm-hmm. we know you could talk about mm-hmm. not having a writer yeah like we, we, we've we've seen everything everything you're doing now is what you've been doing before yeah so what else are you going to give us to latch on to yeah real shit um so very interested in that very very interested in that um next up another track list that we got mustard his album faith of a mustard seed um, we saw some controversy. Capella Gray quoted him, Just and man. apparently Capella Gray was supposed to be on the album. For some reason, it was removed. Uh, some people think it's because Capella was on Joe Budden podcast recently, showing Drake love, and maybe uh, 
this is all this is all theory. That's not me supporting it. Um, <laughs> but the, but the, the record sounded good though. So I'm like, damn, it kind of sucks you're not going to hear it. But what we are getting on Faith of a Mustard Seed, 14 track album features from Kirk Franklin, Lil Yachty, Blue Bucks, Blue, Blue Bucks Clan, 42 Doug, Vince Staples, Schoolboy Q, Quavo, Rob Four Nine, Travis Scott, of course, on the lead single Parking Lot, Ty Dolla Sign, Charlie Wilson, Masego, Blast, A Boogie, Roddy Rich, uh, Ty Dolla Sign, Future, um, LMA. Um, she's actually on the new single that dropped today, One Bad Decision, Kodak Black, Young Thug, and Lil Dirt. So. Thoughts on that track list, thoughts on Mustard's upcoming album, and yeah. It's very mustardish. <laughs> yeah. very I'll mustard. say that. It's very, very mustardish. Mustard. Um, I ain't mad at it. Mm. You know, I think it's a good time for him to put out a project. Yeah, perfect. Perfect time. Perfect timing. Um, and I'm just like we said last time, things have just been so overwhelm overwhelmingly boring. Mm-hmm. That I'm just open now, and if I happen to hear something I like, you know, I'm gonna just add it to the playlist. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I'm real open yeah, and you know, excited see to see Roddy Rich back outside. Yeah. Too, see what you like, got. See what you thing. got. Feel sure. me? Yeah, yeah. For this sure. is this is the time to show and prove. And I really liked Mustard's um 2019 album, Perfect Ten. I thought that was really good. Yeah, that had was the a had, had the Nipsey track on there. Of course, I had Ball and Roddy Rich, yeah. uh, Whoa Whoa, um, Thug and Gunna, another oh, good wow. um, song featuring a uh, Boot Up Girl, oh, LMA. Wow. Like Mustard and, and Ella, when they link up, they, they oh, don't miss. Wow. Like I, I love them working together. They need to forgive John Quees though. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> I want a campaign. <laughs> Justice for John Quees. Come on, Bro, like check. they pregnant at the same time. Bro, I have a. You vi- saw that tweet? That's what they linked. Yeah. I have a viral tweet about like I I tweeted the video. And I tweeted the video. I said, I said, I said, Ella heard this, and she said, "Delete, yeah. like, <laughs> like immediately, Copyright get this nigga strength. out of here because it's so good, bro. Yeah. It's so good. Like she could have pulled the Drake it's controller, so but mm. go ahead. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm excited about Mustard's um album. Is it, he's the, his name Mustard Seed? Uh, F- Faith of a Mustard Seed. Faith of a Mustard yeah, Seed. That's a cute name. That's a cute name. Foams. Okay. Oh, That's a cute name. He killed it with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, the track list is cool. I mean, the features is obviously the coolest part. That's what people are really tuned in yeah. Yeah. with with Mustard. Um, and I feel like the whole world is interested to see what Mustard has, especially after Not Like Us. Yeah. Like, right. It's been a, it's been a while. Um, people were surprised. That's not. The yeah. Album. I was like, that's a Kendrick Lamar song. Yeah. And it wouldn't do anything for the album because Billboard doesn't count like the streams. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't do nothing going into the album anymore. Yeah, so. Wouldn't do nothing. Yeah, you know, um, people just need to stay in their lanes. Yeah, you know, this is the same we talked about last week. <laughs> Anyways, don't gotta be executives. <laughs> Anyways, you can just yeah, press yeah, play yeah. on Spotify and, and just vibe. <laughs> <laughs> but but, uh, go ahead. but yeah, I think um, I think Mustard's in a good spot. He he he, he look he looks good. He lost all that goddamn weight. Yeah, that too. You know, he's he looks like he's geared up and ready to. Take a next step in his career. Yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. Um, there's like seven West Coast artists on here. I that's good. I don't know. For me, it was like, and I remember I said this a couple weeks ago when Parking Lot came out. I was like, I felt like with the momentum of the West right now, it would have been cool to lead with a West Coast artist. Um, seven West Coast artists on a 14 track album. Um, you know, it's it's a good ratio, I guess. Um, but uh yeah, it should be good. Should be good. Mustard does Never really let me down, um. So, right. I'm, I'm interested, very interested in it. Um, they like like I said, they dropped the new single, "One Bad Decision." LMA, Roddy Rich, I'm rolling. I love it. Same. I, I love anytime Roddy and Mustard link. I love anytime Ella and Mustard link, and I love when Ella and Roddy link. Yep. How from her last album was super dope. So, those two come together. Great. Psh, psh. Roddy, Dang. he been outside. I even psh. like that nine one one song. So hearing him like perform really well and like mm-hmm. follow up, um, feature. It's like, all right, I'm excited to hear more from him. Yeah. And Ella May, she always do the damn thing. Yeah. Always. I love her. I love her. Jason Tatum won. I knew you. I was literally, <laughs> I was literally about to say Jason, Jason Tatum. Tatum you won. got it. You said it before. <laughs> I'm, I'm hating. She's in Paris And they right still now. haven't even confirmed that, right? Yeah, yeah, We just yeah. seeing we, that. We, we just speculating pictures. and we just like, damn. We seeing pictures and, you know, Jason already had one baby out of wedlock. So it's safe to assume that he going to see that thing up. Like, shit. <laughs> Yo, who are he? Yeah. Clock game week. Am I lying? Like, <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are lying. And, um, and Deuce. <laughs> Deuce needs a friend. Shout out to Deuce, man. Deuce seem cool as hell. Deuce, Deuce need a friend. Shout out so. to little Deuce. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they're like, 
Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice little couple right bro, there. Bro, Jason with Ella and then Jalen Brown with Kaiser. Bro, they're going crazy, bro. <sighs> They're going crazy, bro. You Celtics social. is winning too much. Yeah, they're doing too much. They're doing, they're doing a lot, bro. I can't not too lie much. to you, bro. They're Life doing a good, lot. Man. I don't like all this. Derek White on Team USA now. They all in, bro, they all in Paris rocking, chilling. Porzingis gets white privilege. Like, fuck y'all, man. Like, fuck out of mm-hmm. here. <laughs> man. <laughs> but, yeah, so we will, we'll have our review of uh, Faith of Mustard Seed when it comes. But now, finally, let's get into this new music from this week that had me pretty, um, I was feeling pretty good about this, so I would like to give put my fist up and salute JT City Cinderella. That shit was hard, right? Yeah, that shit was hard. I mean, it's a good. It's a good I saw her a getting project, a boy. lot of critique. Really? And On what? A lot of people said it was trash. You, did I you did see, see Azalea that Banks? I, I did see a few. T- Fuck Azalea Banks. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Azalea Banks be eating down. Like she be reading. Like I would love for her to give me a brutal assessment, but. Uh, um, I think that she was just, you know, she's also just a bitch too. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, she be reaching sometimes, and this one, this time was a reach. I think JT did a good job. I'm proud of the momentum she was able That's to build thing, for like an entire year yeah. up to the project. Facts. Um, Facts. I did expect more of like a concept. Mm. Like Same. even while I was listening to Same. it, I had a couple ideas myself like damn, we could have used a little skit here. Mm. Or um and she is the she strikes me as a skit type too. Especially it on needed, the it needed more world building. Yeah, and she's like her cultural impact along with Carisha on TikTok is insane. Mm. Like um she has the JT coming going viral right now mm-hmm. and um which one is that? No bars? And mm-hmm. it's like, this pussy that good, I swear. Like, like, that's viral right now on TikTok. So I feel like, you know, like you said, could have used more world building, some skits. It could have been shorter. Mm. Um, what was it? It was, uh, it was like 16, 16 tracks. Yes, yeah, a lot. I wasn't mad at the 16. I think it could have been shorter. There were certain songs on there that I was just like, mm, 16 songs for that. 40 minutes? Not terrible, but okay. Yeah. I, I get it now. People are counting the duration, but like yeah. I still count the tracks. <laughs> you count like, the tracks. I respect that. Uh uh-uh. uh. But that intro track, Hard. I was looking at her different. Hard. It, I I I like. I played it. And I was like, this. It almost didn't sound like her. Low key, you had to I look mean, at your phone like, again. That's why she said Whose that. Whose voice is this? That's why she said I was looking at her different. Yeah. But she came on that bitch different. Yeah. She was. That yeah. shit is hard, yeah. boy. And she was a real student of hip hop. Like you can you see can it tell. through yeah, the you can tell. She wants music, this. The different yes. sounds. She loves music. Like, it was a very yes. well studied, methodical, composed album. It's not just and this grabbing is, beats and rapping. It's this is, really this is what we were saying before. Constructing song concepts. This is what it was we cool. were saying before. I would admit that I do agree with some of the critique that um it was like ABC lyrics a lot of times. <laughs> But I do give Southern rappers grace. That is, I feel like that was the style she was going for a lot of times because mm. we know JT could rap. Yeah. Like we've heard a lot of the songs, features, you know. And I ain't gonna lie, I was hoping Miami would have popped up on the verse. Mm. Like I was here for that. But nevertheless, I'm proud of her. The album felt to to kind of piggyback off your point. I I I can kind of see what what people mean by the ABC, but I felt like. She was really committed here to showing she can make good songs on her own. Yeah. Because she typically had a running mate to make songs with her. And sometimes either Carisha would do the hook, she would just rap, or she would do the hook. Maybe, so she was like, I'm rapping here, but I'm also making hooks. Yeah. I'm, I'm making songs that niggas want to listen to. Like, the d- d- DOD, obviously, that's that's really not not for, for me. That's not, any, <laughs> that's not anything that I would participate in. But I was like, yo, this is, ho-. like, this is undeniably fire. Like, yeah. this is fucking great. 90s, baby. Really love. 90s baby. I can't wait for my birthday. 90s, that's going to be the yeah, song right yeah. on the real. <laughs> 90s baby is hard. Um, uh, baby is Uncle crazy. Al, Swang, Serving. Like, this, it's, this is one of my favorite projects this year. Like, I was wow. talking shit at first wow. when I first listened to it, but I didn't listen mm-hmm. to it in its entirety. And then mm-hmm. I listened to it while I was showering. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, yo, JT. It was repetitive a lot of times too. Like I get and, it, and, and, and that's why that's why I agree with you. It could have been like twelve. Shorter. Could have yeah. been like twelve. Okay. That's why it, I say ten to twelve is like yeah. low key perfect album. Yeah, yeah stuff it got nowadays. too repetitive certain times. But like if we would have took out some tracks, it just would have been like like a ten out of ten for me. But it is mm. definitely one mm. of the top projects of the year. 
Yeah. Um, and considering the marketing behind it too, I really enjoyed everything and, about it. And and how um and how you were saying, I feel like I feel like people like to just attack projects and like artists and just like nowadays, but like like you were saying, she's really been building this shit for like a year. A year in in, in some like in some in some change. So yeah. it's like you I feel like by herself. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like you have you 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 cannot not take that into account. Mm-hmm. Looking at this album and just and just seeing where seeing seeing the growth as her as an artist. Yes. Yeah. Is just like Yeah. And this is like tip you your cap see. like okay. This is like like we said I felt the hunger of her. Mm-hmm. She wanted it, but I was mm-hmm. like an album by yourself? I don't know. Well, it's a mixtape, yeah. It's maybe, I don't know. I think it's a mixtape. Yeah, whatever they say. I well, mean, it's well, a body. It's a body. Of, it's, it's a body. A, of it's music. her first solo body of work. Yeah, yeah. it's a body. And of it's music. like we it's never got that. So regardless of the label that mm-hmm. it gets, like it's still a big thing worth like. Oh I'm shit! Like, yeah, she's she's actually doing this and she did well. I was really happy with. It. I know it was dope because my boys Friday night we in the crib. My boys is going crazy about it. Like yo, this song, that song. Like yo, Armo, you gotta play this. I played. I was like, and of course I was gonna listen anyways. But like seeing my boys like. Hype it up. I was like, all right, this, this is a yeah, big deal. I'm excited. It's a big to deal. Hear that. Like, let me, let me tap in. <laughs> yeah, the first track, bro, the way it comes on is just. Hard, nigga. Yeah, that intro, Hard. I was like, Jatavia, yeah. now we need to know more about your mom and mm-hmm. your family and your parents. Like, she really. She went stupidly yeah. dumb. This is what you want to see. Like, City Girl's been in the game for what, like six years, six, seven years? They've been like, like no. 2018, right? Yeah. And. And their cultural impact is in, undeniable. Absolutely, and and they had a period where people were kind of like off them, and so when you see someone doing a solo endeavor, you want to see them rise to the occasion. A lot of people don't rise to the occasion, so like this is, this should put the the women in within rap on notice. Like, hey, like J- J- JT here, like and she she, she it. always been nice, but like she put she put together a good project. Like, oh yeah, who teens your albums got albums coming soon? She just planted her flag. I do need to address the elephant in the room though, since you brought up the theme other female rappers. Okay. The drama that loomed her album, like apparently her and Nicki possibly fell out, and wow. I hate that. Wow. I hate that. Yeah, and I hate that. Nicki and just, JT. And then, you know, consequently, you know, you saw JT and Cardi go mm-hmm. at it. And then now Meg and JT don't have a relationship. Wow. Yeah, Meg doesn't say free JT when she's performing Realer. She, mm. I, I, there was actually a video and the crowd was saying, fuck JT. And then, you know, now she's so t- team Nikki and Meg and Nikki will never be cool right. again. So it's just like, I hate to see how many outside influences mm. really impacted nah. the new acts of female rap because female to rap be beef honest, is crazy like i hated when cardi and jt went back and forth and what? i hate that female rap from now on will be compared like it would be talked about as pre nikki and post nikki mm. like forever mm. and it's just like mm. i hope the barbs don't make this insufferable online for jt you yeah. know, it's it's real cringe because, like you said, fans are just making these experiences insufferable. Yeah, yeah, especially See? when those numbers come out. Because I'm, I'm oh sure JT God. not gonna do crazy numbers, so the barbs gonna be like, oh, yeah. that's you why know yeah. that <laughs> you know that, and that's why people can say it's bad. Yeah. And and Nikki didn't say anything about it online. Miami barely said anything. Yeah, My, well, and, I wonder why Miami why Miami not say shit. I mean, she reposted the part that's about her. We the same sign. That's some shit I would do too. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, like, bitch. You know we got shit to address. Don't be acting that's like okay. Well then, if that's well, like I'm one of those okay, passive. But I'm gonna show love. I didn't, I didn't know that. That's like I a didn't passive know. way to show support, but not fully. I didn't know they have mm. stuff still to address. I mean, well, they went at it publicly and let us yeah. all in the group chat. So yeah. I would I think that it's real deep, and I do how, think it's how serious. recent. How recent did they do that? It's like a couple months ago. Yeah, months ago. Okay. and I'm sorry, I do think. You know, once I'm a female, once you grow up with a girl, like from day one, and y'all go through phases, like y'all go from girls to women, mm-hmm. and then y'all fall in love or start having kids. You think Carisha's just... jealous? No, I think that they went two different paths and they are no longer as aligned as they used to be before JT's bid. And I don't think that they have a lot of things in common like that anymore, which is why. Miami spends a lot of time with the people she's hanging out with now, like Santana and Ari. Mm-hmm. Like she feels mm-hmm. more 
yeah, in alignment with them. And even when she did the Carisha Please interview, she admitted that she's a bit drained by JT's serious demeanor. <laughs> like, she just wants to play all yeah. day. And JT was JT's like... JT's locked in. Yeah, she's like, that's why I don't go out with them. She's yeah. like, I would think everything they're doing is funny. Like, if I'm walking left and they walking right, I'd be like, why I didn't tell me I was walking right? Yeah. So, you know, like, when you've been dealing with someone, too, for a long time... <laughs> Yeah, like they're sisters. Yeah. So just think about it like that. Yeah. I I do think there is shit still like energy there. Yeah, you just naturally get annoyed by someone. Some resentment starts to build up, and you don't fully let it out. You feel me? You know the love, yeah. or you don't want to go there, yeah. and it just will linger. And then if something pops that cap, the the soda fucking explodes. <laughs> you feel me? You can't me? put the soda back in the bottle after that. We so. know Uzi don't like Miami, mm-hmm. so it's a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, the girls are going through it, and I'm praying for them. Yeah, but um, definitely want to salute JT for that um, really good album. Pleasant surprise. Um, so, congrats to her. I wasn't surprised, <laughs> period. <laughs> salute to you. <laughs> um, another new album we got, Childish Gambino's Bando Stone and the New World. 17 songs, features from Chloe, Flo Millie. Uh, is, is it Amare? A M A A R. That's how I say it. Amare, mm-hmm. okay. Amare, mm-hmm. Georgia Smith, Legend, uh, Ludwig <laughs> Goranson, Yeet, Fouché. Um, how'd y'all feel about the Childish Gambino album? First of all, if this was 2008, I would have been listening to the first <laughs> track in reverse, listening for Illuminati tools. <laughs> <laughs> like. That shit had me weak, but it was um, a very jarring <laughs> intro. Like, yeah. like, no nah, facts. I was like, childish. What, 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 what the fuck? You I'm doing? like, this some Illuminati where shit. Where are you taking me, bro? <laughs> That's the thing. Facts. Like, where are you taking? Cancel the Uber, bro. I'm, where I want to go home. Me, and then he took us so many places. Yeah. I wasn't mad at certain moments. I, yeah. I felt like that Jay Z diff. I feel like I feel like that a lot mm-hmm. when I'm yeah. listening to music. Mm-hmm. But um. This is like his last album or something. As a childish Gambino, <laughs> because it sounded yeah. like it. Yeah, he's he's, he's retiring the no. childish Gambino character. No, um, it I, gave. This t- <laughs> he's got me weak it right gave. now. Y'all. Holy moly! It gave. Yeah, I mean, I it, <laughs> like. He said, "Let me just let it all out." You know, like when Future dropped them two albums a week apart. He's like, "Listen, take that." No, so listen. Yeah, I think you know. Yeah. The, uh, we talk about world building a lot on this show <laughs> or yeah this 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 show um i feel like every song is a different world that's been Bro. built and, hey. and and we're trying and we get into the world and, and we're like what's going on? like oh my god what's going on and then we get kicked leave, out of the nigga. world <laughs> into right, the next out. world yeah like, and we're just like i feel like the whole thing is like that of us just being like <laughs> being like ripped through like worlds yeah and, like, you know which like, one was my favorite world the rock one yeah that shit felt like that mtv hits that, that shit was, was um, crazy it was giving mtv hits that getting ready for school it was a running around with fouché yeah, yeah it was, like, it, was a, it was like two bro. of them it was yeah it was a couple rock joints yeah bro and low-key he got his ear to the streets per usual. Mm-hmm. Like that's no surprise. Mm-hmm. But like he had Amare on there like yeah. a few Twice. times. I said, yo, that's my bitch. Yeah. And that's what that's what inspired my slide deck today, too. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So wasn't there was another feature on there, Ludwig? Oh L- uh, yeah, L- Ludwig, L- Ludwig Gorenson. Yep. You know who he you know he did the he did the the soundtrack for Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. Oh like wow. that's like some nut shit that he's that doing. Shit. Like yeah. like that's like that's crazy, bro. Like yeah. what in the hell? I mean, Childish has, like, always been Donald very, Glover. very worldly. Like, yeah. He's, yeah. he's never been mm-hmm. in one box musically. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, th- I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, he's yeah. not, like, my favorite artist. But, of course, of course. you know, I liked, like, Because the Internet. And I like certain stuff off of, um, what was his, uh, 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 his 2016 album? The one with the woman coming out of it? Um, the, the, the one that Redbone was on. Yeah. So, so, something My Love. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. uh, awake you know, I know the thing. awake. Yeah. yeah, I know the yeah. artwork. Yeah, it's like in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. and like yeah, he's he's gone in so many different musical directions. And I thought, while this one, it it kind of kind of threw me all over the place. Like musically, it was, it was all over the place. But really good records, like like some jams. And I kind of went into it just like I'm, I'm gonna listen to to assess it for the pod. But I was actually yeah. like rocking to some shit. Like nigga, that was some multiverse music. Yeah, yeah. Like, like we was popping through the multiverse. <laughs> yeah. Fucking survive with Chloe, I really liked. Talk yeah. my shit with Flo Millie and Amari, mm, yeah. I liked. Mm-hmm. Real Love was dope. Mm-hmm. Yoshi Nanoa, Nawa, whatever. That was kind of yeah. fire. Like, you got some shit on here. I was like, okay, childish. Like, dope, dope. I ain't gonna front, though. I definitely was a lot more motivated to listen to it after he cursed us out at the BET Awards. Okay, yeah. I wanted to talk he to him. He gathered about that. me real he was de- fucking. Really? He was dead ass serious, huh? Yeah. 
I had I had my laptop in the crowd because mm-hmm. you know I was editing the mm-hmm. homepage and shit. And like when he kept going, I looked up. <laughs> And, like, I'm in the section with all the BT production workers, and then we were all looking at each other, and I'm like, oh, he's serious. Yeah, well, he's dead yeah. ass. Yeah, and, like, when he kept going and going, I was like, oh. But also, like, I was the girl in school that was friends with everyone. Mm-hmm. Like, I live in the hood, but was in the advanced classes. Yeah. And I would, like, mesh my friends and stuff. So, like, when he spoke, I've heard that sentiment before. Right. So I knew he was serious. Like, yeah. he was really hurt about that um we've even heard will smith talk about that which is like what led to the the slap ultimately Mm -hmm. but um yeah i do think it's unfair i used to be one of those people like nah i'm I'm for the trenches like if you ain't from the hood i ain't fucking with that shit i used to be one of those but i like to just be open-minded because you know we are not monolithic as a community of people and Mm -hmm. childish gambino i Mm -hmm. mean the anti-black woman shit, though, you can't escape that's, from that. That's, that's what I And mean. that's the only thing. You like, can't, you can't, my brother. Like, him and uh, Tyler, the creator, just be trying to erase their past and mm-hmm. act like, oh, yeah. I, blacks just don't like me. Like, nah, you're weird, nigga. <laughs> he, yeah, like, <laughs> childish to me is, like, the dude in college who, the black dude who joins a white frat, but then be coming to all the black parties and, like, being upset when he gets weird looks, like, like nigga, why you here? Like, bro, like, and I, I salute him for what he's accomplished in pop culture, correct. In, in the mainstream, beyond the black community, you know, yeah. like it's, it's cool to see our people do that. But I've never really felt connected to him as a no. black figure. Like he is black, he makes music within the black culture. But I, I would, I would have thought he don't give a fuck about the BET Awards. But it's niggas like that who really want that they identity. Really, they yeah. want that validation. So yeah. I get it. But what are you doing within our diaspora? Diaspora. To make us feel that way, like swarm that show weird as shit. Like, what 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 you doing that for? <laughs> why couldn't you make a, a a a weird psychotic white fan? Like, why 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 you had to paint a black woman that way? It was weird to me. And and I, I know it was like model after uh, Beehive Beyonce fans. I get it. I don't know. It was like I, I watched it. My me and my ex watched it together. And I was like, I I really wish I did not watch this. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of like what the fuck moments. Yeah. Watching but then he made shit. Atlanta, and Atlanta was. I love Atlanta, Atlanta was pretty well received. I I liked it. Yeah. I, I didn't watch all of it, but I liked it. I, I didn't it. watch all of it either. But yeah, I don't know. It it always felt like he he always felt like a fence player to me. Like he stays yep. on one side just close enough to be, you know, welcomed and keep his connections within hip hop and all that, but then he's mm-hmm. also out here trying to do all this other shit and yeah. appeal to the masses. And which is fine, but you can't have your cake and eat it too. Which it's always been a weird phrase to me because, like, technically, isn't having that what your you're cake supposed to do? eating it too? Like, <laughs> like, do you mean having it like, like, untouched? Because okay, maybe, but I don't know. Maybe- I ain't gonna front. Even while listening to this album, I forgot which song it was because I was just listening to it while I was driving, mm-hmm. and he said something about like I fuck my wife, and I was just like, "What are you talking about, that white lady?" <laughs> and then, it, and then in another song, he's like, "Oh, I fuck the hoes," and I'm like. Them hoes better be white too, mm. because you was just bragging about how you faithful, and now you talking about infidelity, and you better not be using black women as hoes. That's like one of my favorite tropes in in hip hop is when like a rapper you know has a wife, like a, a committed marriage and family, and they talk about fucking hoes. I'm like, yeah, that should be kind of crazy. I'm like, what the fuck? That's why <laughs> like, I love when female rappers do it. I love when Cardi be talking about that shit right mm, in front of Offset. Mm. Like, yeah. Funny truck, but <laughs> yeah, I, I'll say I really did like some stuff on this album. Um, I, I I don't know what his next step is. But again, I, I don't know if he's like. <laughs> isn't a movie? You're coming confused. Out? I'm confused. Yeah. So like, isn't he drop? Isn't he dropping a movie with this? Listen, this is his last Maybe. album. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's it. No, the bando, the bando stone thing is is about to be. It's, it's a movie. He's making a movie out of it. I'm this Donald lie. Glover now. It's about to be in theaters. Like I, I AMC. truly do not be paying attention to like, this nigga. I, I don't. I, really I don't, don't either. Until he cursed us out, so I was just yeah. like, "Man, let me listen to this I shit so he said, can feel black." That nigga said he wanted BET it was, award. It was, it was funny as hell that he said he has the same amount as Sam Smith. I was like, hey, "Which man, is kind of crazy." He ate that. Sam Smith is that nigga though. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Sam Smith. Sam Smith invited to the cookout wedding. <laughs> I don't is know about it? that. I don't Sam know about that. that. Come on now, nah. Sam, so Sam Smith. <laughs> made, a couple years ago, you could, but Sam, no, Sam Smith no, made no. latch. Lay me down. Uh, um, latch um, yeah. is a classic. Latch is a classic. Latch, is a classic. Latch, lay me down. Latch What's the other one? Um, but no. I'm not the only one. Sam Smith got too many classics and too many, like, one of the most soulful white boys we have ever seen in my life. Really? He need more than soul. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. The only one who's coming is Paul Wall. That's it. Paul Wall is definitely welcome. I think he's the only one. But Sam, <laughs> Sam Smith is second on my list. But um, that's that. But that's yeah, so, so, salute to you, Childish. That was, that was, that was uh, some, some, some jams on there. Some, some stuff for the summer, like some upbeat bops. Like it, was some, a like, lot. it was a lot of shit yeah, for everything. Yeah, honestly, like <laughs> it, it, it was a fucking buffet of, of tracks. So yeah. I, think, I think anyone who's a fan of him and his multiple characters and you know identities i think i think you'll come away with something that you'll enjoy so i'm, I'm rolling i'm rolling salute to him um some new singles rob 49 and cardi b fuck me on that money she trying to have some rich sex yeah how'd y'all feel about on that money Uh-oh. it was okay yeah i guess it's cool bro i mean yeah it's rob okay. 49 type shit mm-hmm. yeah Fuck me on that money, B. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's just like some New Orleans shit. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, you got a nice feature. That's a that's a fire-ass feature. Mm-hmm. And, it was right yeah. in Cardi's pocket. Like, yeah. Like yeah. Pocket. It makes sense. Yeah. Hopefully it goes up. I don't know. I, I I think your collective black size um, are, <laughs> are, are indicative of how I feel. It's like another Cardi feature. Mm-hmm. You did well. We know you can do this. Mm-hmm. It's getting to the point where it's like, Mm-hmm. And she said she wasn't going to do this anymore. Yeah. So I do think that's Fuck why I'm giving money, her a little hard time. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, she went back and forth with Joe Button. So yes. we got to be responsible mm-hmm. on Stay Busy because that's what we do. Yeah. That is the culture of Talk the podcast. It, you go. feel Talk me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she, so She read the bio. <laughs> you feel me? Like, mm-hmm. I understand, like, where mm-hmm. she's coming from because... Yeah. Artists are human. Yes. You feel me? Regardless of it being our jobs to criticize them, they're going to feel away yeah. if you say some shit that they don't like. Mm-hmm. But you definitely said you wasn't going to do no more features and mm-hmm. drop like three more. Yeah. <laughs> so just please just answer that. That's yeah. it. Joe didn't tell it. Joe, <laughs> Joe said what a lot of people feel and just don't have the platform to for it to be as impactful. Right now, but Cardi feels like it's a singles artist. A singles and a features artist and a brands deal artist. Yeah, yeah. that's what that's really what it is. And it's a like deal artist. It's like that's it's like, okay. That's a new lane now. We've Gangsta, all that's we've, a whole, we've all accepted it. But she needs to just be up front. That's about what this it album. is. Like when you were saying you're not dropping, and then your your label comes thirty minutes later with a tweet yeah, saying is. we can't wait <laughs> to drop Cardi's album. You doing Rolling Stone covers like. You for years talking about popping out pregnant the fucking completion completion percentage of the album like all this stuff like you 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 doing a rollout without even really doing a rollout because like it's been endless like we don't know when the music is coming so yeah the the song's cool the song's good it's not a bad song but it's just like I'm tired of the same old thing on the human tip though the pressure's on her like we oh, pressuring her right absolutely. now yeah. We put in the pressure on her. The yeah. pressure is on Cardi yeah. to drop a successful sophomore album. Mm. And like, you know, uh, I sadly said, everything is going to be compared to pre and post Nicki at this point in female rap. And I mean, she... not even getting to Nicki, just her classic debut album, Invasion yeah. of Privacy. Yeah, I mean, like, I, th- I think, I think it's she's got be... a very lofty thing to even try to meet with that. That too. Oh, God, Grammy that's... award winning, yeah. record breaking album. Records, like... And then never... Nicki just broke crazy records this year. So mm-hmm. that's more pressure because that's supposed to be her rival. And it's not. We know it's not. The new girls should be compared with the new girls. And Nicki just, just start nicki in. Yeah, it's crazy someone who, like, Cardi <laughs> Cardi reached the heights where, like, people made her comparable to Nicki. My nigga, she beat out Astro. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. it but, and Nipsey. That shit is crazy. I Nipsey, mean, Mac it, Miller. It, it, um, but she did have a better project than all of them. Yeah, it was a moment. Nipsey said it himself. It like, a listen. moment. Huge ass moment. I mean, what if she never drops again? Well, she just, like, really, like... Drop That's it. what we're saying. This is the million be dollar question. About it. It's it's uh, there are people who've been asking me that. There are people who have been talking about. It. I'm just like, I mean, do a Spanish album, sister. Look at where we nuts. put Lauren Hill with only one album. Nuts. Look at how Lauren Hill has been able to exist in this pantheon of greatness with only one album. But we've acknowledged that people are starting to rewrite that history. It's very true. Mm. It's very true. Because of. It's only one album. And people are already rewriting Invasion of Privacy, too. So. Yeah. Like, you know, so I don't know. Nah, Cardi needs another again. album, she's though. Drop. It could be Spanish, she's honestly. I think that would be a dope pocket burn. She Very easy. Shit. She got some shit coming. 
Okay. Period. We got the exclusive on the pod. Mm. We're going to see. She's going to get added to the rotation on the DJ set. She got a, I'm a, she got a little something. I'm on to the Cardi voice. <laughs> the Reeves King. She got a little something. She got some, she got some, she got some shit coming. Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, you heard it here first. Um, I don't know about this year, but she got some shit coming. Right. Listen, it's coming. That's, don't wait on it, but it's coming. Yeah. That's the operative word. It's like, we don't know, <laughs> but, but it's coming. Um, another single we got, um, Big Sean, Yes. <sighs> How'd y'all feel about Big Sean's new single, Yes? I'm never going to hate Big Sean, but, but. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. Was, was, was Yes a, a, a no? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Yeah, mm. Big Sean can rap really well. Yeah, it was a maybe for me. Mm, Just like a maybe, mm. Mm. Yeah. he can rap really well. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's that's never been questioned. Right, right, right. Is him and Janae married? No. Okay. No. You know these niggas don't be marrying, child. They just gonna seed you up. Yeah, that's a that's a combo for a different. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, no, the track was all right, man. Um, I'm I, it's it's tight to see Big Sean. Back out here, kind of still active and still, mm-hmm. still doing his thing. He's trying to be. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to be. Yeah, yeah. fact. The, like, yeah, because yeah. didn't he like try to do something and then they started beefing? He dropped Precision. I think it was the week of. Might have been the week of Euphoria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I seen I seen his whole album leak and niggas was saying it was trash. Yeah. yeah everybody was like, "Yeah, it should keep that shit. We don't need it. You got, <laughs> like, you don't got to drop it. Keep that shit." I was just like, "Damn." Delete that so hard then, drive. Yeah, fact. So then, like, so then I guess he's. About to re drop something different. It's just like the on the radar freestyle was really good. Traction. It was really good. Really actually. good. That was actually yeah, really good. He, he snapped Sean. on that shit. He snapped he really on that shit. He did. You know what I don't like though? Sometimes though, I feel like I feel like artists and like rappers and like when they come to New York, they like be trying to like cosplay New York niggas. Like, did you see him go? Did you see him? Child. Did you see him go to like the, the Aki I thing? I never had a child oh, yeah, 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 yeah. in my life. But, but listen, like, okay, so like the Aki thing is fine. Go ahead no, and do not. that. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not done. I'm not done. But like the, you see what he was like wearing and like, he's like trying to look like a New York <laughs> nigga. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> Oh, like, Sean, you ain't thought about a chopped cheese a day in your life, my nigga. I never just, had you're one from either. Detroit. I'm just like, if, bro, if you don't get that Jets pizza, on, bro. <laughs> oh, bro, Jets pizza is fire. That's shit hard. Yo, yo, yo I found one in the city the other day. Bro, I found one in the city too. Shit, I be ordering all the time, bro. Shit, fire. That's some Detroit shit. Yeah, Jets yeah, pizza it's, is fire. You gotta try it. Detroit style pizza, like fire. High, that shit high quality. But um, yeah, man. Like, I decided like a few years ago. I'm just kind of over Big Sean. Like, great rapper. I loved him in the early 2010s. Like, bro, fucking Lemonade, Lemonade Dance, yeah. Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay. Like, mm-hmm. and then 2015, The Dark Sky Paradise. I, I feel like that's his best no album. Games. Play No Games is elite. Um, after that, it was just like, n- nothing really grabbed me like that. Detroit 2 was meh. I decided it was meh. That Metro tape was bad. Um... That was terrible. And he linked up with Hit Boy. I feel like he tried to do what Nas was doing, but Nas did it way we better. Yeah. And we like care about Nas more. <laughs> the Janae album was it's cool. It's true. Tw- 2088 was hard. 2088 was, cool. was one of the best projects of 2016. That was cool. For sure. That was cool. For sure. But yeah, I don't know. Like, Sean, I'm just. Uh, and like, he's on this whole new, like, peace wave like he, I hate it. he's so positive I and just like it. mental peace and I hey, hey, man, hey i'm a huge mental health advocate i I, I, I support peace but the way he does it it feels almost like gimmicky yeah and uh. you too peaceful my nigga because three years ago kanye west told you signing you was the worst decision ever and you, and you doing songs with him that are gonna be on vultures too like think bro run Get, get, get away from that nigga, bro. Get, get away. Like, come on, man. Niggas is too peaceful. So, hey, hey, so, hey, so, hey, so, run for your life. Like, so, so, so sometimes <laughs> sometimes you gotta boss up and punch niggas. Remix. Oh, bro. Like, bro, <laughs> Kanye West does not does not deserve your 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 vocals over his production. Fuck that nigga. You know he's he's an advocate for mental health, so he's probably trying to be sensitive. Don't give Kanye needs. I, I don't. I'm not getting. What he Kanye need a needs. box. I'm not gonna get into, but yeah. Um. So yeah, the album apparently leaked. The the original name was like feelings and random thoughts i was like this is such nah, a big sean nah, 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 fucking it, album it was, title. and that's what kanye it was, was not, talking about it was not that i'm like bro, it was not that bro. that's the that's title what he was that, that nigga about. said it was and i'm like hold no. on no. this is the acronym for fart ice spice he's coming for you 
<laughs> ah! well, all these, these niggas obsessed with flagellants and gas and ex- like their their Bucks. bowels. It's too it's much. Crazy. It's too it's much, crazy. bro. Listen, it's very d- d- um, uh, indicative of what the music scene is right now. Listen. I promise my friend I won't even allude to them type of stuff no more. So I just agree with everything y'all saying. Wait, allude to what? With everything y'all saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we, we don't want you to. to no, she, we don't want you to suppress she can't your thoughts. Say it. She don't want to. She can't. I she's can't. Really I can't. promise. She promised somebody. Yeah. That she can't. She can't. Like, I had to stop doing she that. Stop, I got stop, labeled. Yeah. I was like, oh. you got I can't even what? oppress anyone. I'm a black woman. Oh, got you. But yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So. When his album leaked, he was like, all right, let me start teasing it. So he teased a song with Alchemist. Sounded good. Sounded good. It was more like soulful type stuff. That's kind of what I want to hear, Sean. I, I want to see you evolve your artistry. Like, but doing all, like, he, like on Detroit 2, he was t- talking about, like, Dr. Sebi and shit like that. Like, don't do that, bro. Like, don't. <laughs> we don't need your don't thoughts like on, on, on world medicine I and, don't need, yeah, and I, shit during the pandemic. Don't, we don't need that. I don't need Dr. Sebi uh, raps. I can't lie to you. No, thank you. You are older, nigga. He stopped drinking Wait, for, for two older? years. How old is he? He's he's like mid thirties now, right? Yeah, he's he like mid thirties. Yeah, I mean, he is, but he has to be like he has to be like he's, he, he's around for a minute. or like thirty eight, maybe thirty thirty six. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, like you're older. You got a kid now. You've been sober for two years. Like you know, like let's let's see maturity and and you like not a mature album or mature rats, but just evolve from. You know, like, Sean, I always loved Sean because he had, like, cool punchlines, a really cool flow, like, you know, like, kind of swaggy type type mm-hmm. style. But it's like, all right, bro, like, that was impressive to me in 2010 when, right, I, when, when I was I, a kid. Yeah, like, I didn't even have my, my fucking learner's permit yet. Like, come on now. Like, you got to, you know, I, I want to see something different. And yeah. it, it felt like his style never changed up much, which is why I kind of just was over it a couple years ago. So yeah. I'm going to give him a chance. That's fair. I think it's, I think it's. Oh, completely all right for anybody to be kind of done with Big Sean at this point. Yeah. Just because he's been out for a long time. like And, like, being out that long and being... You got to be on the levels of, like, Kanye West and, like, shit like that to, mm-hmm. like, be that... To have that longevity and also be that good still too, like it's it's, it's that shit is tough. Yeah, you know? Yeah. We, we, we had a lot of fun, man. Like, we had a lot of fun. Marvin and Chardonnay. <laughs> ass. Um, high. Well, uh, I do it, bounce back, <laughs> moves. Like, I, do I don't fuck with you, like, bro. You gave what's us that, a lot. What's that shit with Nicki? Ass, ass, ass. ass. Kanye Earth, West's Earth, comments Earth, Earth, about Earth. that song though had me crying. What did he say? What did he, what he, say? Say again? What he was say? like, <laughs> it was something about That's like, like, like are you proud that the best song that you put out is just you singing ass, 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 <laughs> ass? <laughs> I'm like, yo, Kanye be cutting. He be cutting niggas up. He be cutting. He be cutting niggas up. <laughs> niggas be, uh, bro, I know niggas be sick hearing this. So hear this nigga go. But yeah, Sean. I'm going to still listen now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And last but most certainly not least, this is one of my guilty pleasures. I don't give a fuck how y'all feel about this nigga. I fuck with his music. The the robot himself, Four Bats. Put out the Act Four fucking you again remix the with the is. one, the only, Mr. Usher Thursday, Raymond. Baby. How'd y'all feel about Act Four fucking you again? Eighteen plus, Jesus which is in, in, an insane title. Like, I, nah, I don't, I don't, it's necessary, especially with Usher on it. So, I mean, he probably should do like twenty one plus, or maybe like twenty five, thirty. You're a little older than that, like. This, but, yeah, that, um, he married too, like. You, right. You, you, yeah. But I did. I like the link up. Like mm-hmm. I love when the generations link yeah, up. Hard. Yeah, like, it's hard. Um, hard. Usher, like he's indie now, really free to do whatever he wants. So this was refreshing to see because I don't think we've ever seen Usher really experiment much or do different like link ups like this. So I like it, and I like yeah. it for Four Bats as well. Like it's a legendary feature for him. Yeah. So and it's fire. Like he, well, gotten, not fire. It's okay. I thought. Yeah, he's gotten Drake. Kanye and Usher within the first year of his run. Like that's so if like if 106 in the Park existed, we would feel that oh way God. more. Real shit, no. Real like, you sh- know? What you just said, say say it again. We would like, fe- we would feel that. Yeah, we would feel that. Like we would his be like, feature. People would be like, oh, it's he's like serious. Yeah. yeah, like this shit is. Oh, this shit is for real. Like it's not no like. Yeah, we just can't feel it yeah, because you, you know it's it. all like digital and algorithms, and we're all consuming like what we want. But yeah. like, 
Yeah, he's doing his big one. He's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. Yeah, and I, I think the narrative surrounding him early was industry plant because he mm-hmm. popped out of nowhere. And it's, right. It's like, man, whatever. They said like, that that wasn't even his voice, all type of weird I mean, shit. Like, so the fuck what? A lot of these niggas be fucking around with their voices, man. Like, it, well, that's really not his voice. Um, yeah, it is. He it's, he just. I mean, you was about to say it, but like, he just pitches it up. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. It's just like studio shit. It's like anybody, like yeah, yeah. I mean, just like, anybody yeah. making. They music. talking like he was DDG or something. Yeah, yeah no, nah, <laughs> like, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> he's a fucking ventriloquist or something. You got somebody Word, else singing like, for him, but no. he, he's got records on his album that I actually really liked, and I was like, his singles didn't move me that much, but like the album, the album some album cuts on there. There goes another vase. We were talking about that earlier. Oh, yeah, um. Yeah. Hate, hate to be alone. Um, mm-hmm. that, that that joint sounds like an '80s like school dance type music, like something you would see niggas slow dancing to. Um, and then fucking you, the original, and then the remix. Usher smoked it. Um, and I, I salute Four Bats for like welcoming a legend on his song to get smoked like that. Like, yeah, like that's hey, man. what I was impressed like, by. Because you know what it's gonna do for him. It's like sometimes you gotta let that happen. Sometimes, I mean, yeah, he probably bro. did it for his mom. You know, yeah. sometimes you yeah, just that do too. shit. That's yeah. true. Like you feel that me? Too. I seen Didi Osama out. I'm like, come here, come take a picture so my cousin know I got motion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also the particular song he picked, it, it sounds within the ilk of like a nice and slow too. So it was like Usher fit. <laughs> perfectly on that like mm-hmm. really really great record um you know i mean in, i'm interested in seeing where four bats goes we know he's going on tour soon if it hasn't started already um you know the the next step is always like all right you made a good project do it again and you know mm-hmm. who else are you gonna link up with i think it'll be cool to see him work with some women um that would be interesting like that's that's really who do you have in mind the type of music he makes what i could see a summer walker link up yeah <laughs> Definitely. I, I can see that. Damn, I can see that summer. would be fucking fire, actually. I can low-key see a SZA, SZA link up. That'd yeah. be crazy. I can see that. Um, I, I wouldn't even be mad at like him linking up with her. I don't mm. know. But hers, hers too good, too one. good of a vocalist. She might like really like smokers, which which he again, he might he might accept that. But more so those like moody, sensual mm-hmm. type type artists, mm-hmm. you know, who who because he's very unfiltered in his lyrics, which I like. Like yeah. we talked about, there goes another vase. It gets gets to some pretty tough topics, <laughs> um, some not not pretty topics. And so I think you know you bring in, yeah. you know, two labeled toxic women like you know Sizz and Summer Walker. And I think they can make magic together. So I'm I'm into it. I'm into it. But yeah, I I really fuck with that song. I was listening to it on on the train over here and caught myself like singing and I had to look around and see if like niggas on the train was looking at me because I was no, um, chill on that shit is hard <laughs> stop chill on fuck unk. you <laughs> yeah that shit hard but I, yeah anyways <laughs> so that's our chat for this week a lot of new music um, let us know in our, our Twitter our Instagram our TikTok whatever let us know your thoughts on all these new tracks of course um, but um, let's get into uh, our board meeting for this week. So what I wanted to do, I uh, we you met, you know, my two new co-hosts, Miss Two Bs and Will. You've gotten to know them throughout this season, heard their takes. We played a little get to know them game early on, but I wanted to kind of capture the full story of their journeys. And so for the next two weeks, you will be hearing uh we'll we'll be interviewing one another. Um I obviously won't be getting interviewed. Y'all have got to know me for five years. Um, but we will be interviewing those two just so you can get to know them um, and their full journey. So, um, Will is our topic for this week. So, to start, man, you were born in Ohio? I was born in uh, Chicago. Okay. And how, how long did you live there? Um, Not that long, to be honest, bro. Like, we lived there for maybe till I was, like, maybe age four. Mm. And then we moved around because my dad took jobs in, like, uh, took jobs in Carolina, took some jobs in different places you know what we lived at really before ohio we lived in minnesota for like seven years damn you've been around yeah damn. <laughs> yeah so then <laughs> yeah so then by the time i moved to ohio um which was shitty i moved in the middle of the middle of seventh grade year so yeah. like right when damn. like right when you're like making friends and mm-hmm. like starting to be like oh like mm-hmm. i might have a crush on this girl i might do this and that <laughs> yeah. blah, blah blah i moved and Damn. Yeah, I moved to we moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, and that shit was that shit was a shock. Like I was sick. I was mad. I was sick, but mm-hmm. I did not want to move. Like it was like we were just I was just getting locked into Minnesota for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? You were seventh grade, like thirteen, thirteen or like twelve, thirteen. Mm-hmm. That's definitely when you fall in love every year. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. Ooh. So it was just mm-hmm. like, damn, and like 
the summer we came off the summer the summer was lit like yep. you know what i'm saying like i started making friends in my neighborhood and like boom 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 next you got year. to go to high school you're kind of mm. like getting older mm -hmm. yeah. and then we moved moved to cincinnati cincinnati ohio i've always wondered like what that process is like moving from to a different state because i've only moved once in my life i've lived in the apartment i'm currently in since my junior year of high school and then mm -hmm. prior to that i lived in the same house leading up to my junior year of high school so like especially being young and mm -hmm. like you said getting acquainted somewhere making friends there starting to like it like what was that process like moving multiple times <sighs> moving multiple Younger, it's fine. Right, I mean, do shit. younger, you're just like you're just like a kid, you're just moving around. Like, okay, yeah, like, but I, 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 I tell you, man, that that moving when you're like teenager, like mm -hmm. early teen, or like going into teenage years was tough, bro. Like, especially you know, I'm the oldest out of three. Um, I have two younger brothers. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm the oldest out of three, so it's like. I was just thrown into the mix and like they were just moving. They were like, whatever. Like my brothers are just like cool, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then you know we moved to we moved to Cincinnati and it was it was tough at first because it was just like I don't know anybody. I just was like I was just a new kid, mm -hmm. like the new, <laughs> also like the new black kid <laughs> in like a <laughs> that part suburban type of like mm -hmm. area type. So it was it was it, it was tough at it's tough at first, but then you know. It was tough at first, but then you start to kind of find your clan. I didn't really find my when I when I when I say clan, I mean like black people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not to be confused yeah. not to be that. not to be confused. No. The other <laughs> clan. That can be confused with the other clan. Um, yeah, like uh, so like when I yeah, it took me to maybe like maybe like high school because you know what our our district was so big that mm. we had a thing called the freshman building because mm. our our. Our district was so huge, so they send everybody. When you go to the ninth grade, you go to the freshman building, then you break off. You go to east and west. I went to east, but um, the friends you made, the friends you make in that freshman building, is so crazy. And then you have to break apart again, mm -hmm. and it's like it was crazy, but at the same time, it was easy to be like, oh, like these are my people. This is that blah blah blah. Like I had a friend. I had a friend that I learned and met that he lived down the lived down the street from me, and you know we became cool friends in the neighborhood that I actually lived in. So, do y'all still speak? No, no. <laughs> no. It was definitely like some like high school shit, and mm -hmm. like also he was like, he's a little bit older than me too. So like, I feel like when people graduate high school and you're not in the same class as you, mm -hmm. once they go on their life, like they're like low key gone. Like mm -hmm. especially like if they go away for college or something like that, or like yeah, I just didn't didn't speak to him like i would catch him maybe when he comes back from the summer but yeah mm -hmm. social media just made it so easy to keep in touch so yeah, yeah. that's why i asked because i'm literally in yeah. touch with every like a lot of people mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. all walks of life yeah yeah i've got friends who i've been cool with since second grade i've got people who mm -hmm. i found after 10 years <laughs> literally. That's, that's crazy elementary yeah. school i just found an ex last night <laughs> I haven't spoken to him <laughs> since like seventh grade how are you looking the same, but older, and I'm just like, oh my yeah. god! You gonna spin? I don't know. <laughs> Depends. Let's see. Stay tuned. <laughs> Let me lock back in. Um, <laughs> what what do you remember? The first thing you ever wanted to be when you grew up, like, what what do you remember that being? Armand is such a great interview. He's a great like, idea. Yeah, yeah. He is, and I don't want to say generic shit, but like. Yeah, yeah, like bro, I was big into sports, so like I wanted to be like I wanted to go to the NBA or like do and then something. Did you say like, your dad loved Michael Jordan? Oh yeah, oh oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Definitely be in Chicago and like that's why that's why when people like be saying like LeBron's a goat, like I just can never go just because yeah. like I really grew up in that Chicago mm -hmm. era, like and my dad had a huge cutout of of Jordan. He has like that's signed hilarious. signed basketballs and like just just crazy memorabilia and the way we just the way that jordan was told in my household was like he really was black jesus mm -hmm. so yeah um love basketball bro love sports um are was, you nice i used to be i haven't played in so i haven't played <laughs> so i'm gonna so say long. you don't strike me as a type to i just be haven't nice. played i, I just haven't played, I just haven't played in a long <laughs> I ain't gonna time lie. I, it's fine that's cool that's fine <laughs> you know what and it was funny because like after i realized that like I was like, okay, maybe it's not going to work out for me. Like, I started training my younger brothers. Mm -hmm. like, Smart. I started being locked in like, yo, like, 
we're gonna do yeah. this especially like my my uh my younger brother my middle brother he was he was in gymnastics too so he was like mm. dumb oh, athletic i was like the yeah. shit that he could do like this go do a backflip go do this go go score a touchdown so like he was good <laughs> at football so i really trained him at football but i learned early and that uh, i'm glad i kind of did that i learned yeah you can't make nobody do nothing they don't like really want to do mm-hmm. like and it, no matter like how i don't know how talented they might seem it just might not be for them like yeah. it's just like yeah. people have different interests and different things like now he loves tennis and it's like to see the way he like gets hype and talks about tennis and the way he can like it's, it's tight to see so what's the yeah. age gap between you and your brothers <sighs> my so my my middle brother he's four years apart and then my younger brother he's six years apart from me oh okay. so Aww. yeah so, like, so they're like mid early 20s mm-hmm. gotcha. yeah, yeah 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 what's your earliest like music memory like your first favorite song or song you remember hearing on the radio a lot or something like that you know what i have a lot of i have a lot of, a lot of good music memories um i'll tell you the first time First time hearing Sammy on the radio, mm. I was like, classic. I just I, the sparkle, like I don't know, like it was like it felt like a Disney movie. Like I was just like, oh my god, like <laughs> this is like music, like this is amazing. Like <laughs> I was like, holy shit, like this is a music. And then like finding out, like finding out Bow Wow, like a kid, man, like the same age as me, like having it like that. He's from Ohio, yeah, that too. Yeah. Like he was from Ohio. Yeah, it was just like I was just, <sighs> and then like. Oh my gosh, the Harbaugh video! Mm. Oh, with all them and that it, that yo, changed my life. You just unlocked the core motherfucking memory chain, bro. Go watch the video after the, the video is, bro. I'm about to watch the movie too. Yes, it Man. was just it was every it was everything. So like having those early moments Damn. of like that type of stuff, but also going to family reunions and seeing the older music mm-hmm. that you know our parents or grandmas aunties liked and see i was like okay like and at first not at first but like this is what happens like you just get older and you start to appreciate that mm-hmm. music a lot more because back then you're okay you're like no that's old music like turn that out blah 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 <laughs> but then if something comes on by the whispers right now or whatever or something like that like, it's, like yo they don't make shit like this no more <laughs> facts. like seriously so yeah bro i had I, I had a lot of good a lot of a lot of good memories i remember the first time I think the first albums I really bought was it was a Bow Wow album. I, I forgot which one I bought. Bow Wow was that nigga. Son. Bought, yeah, bought he felt like one. the biggest actor. Yeah, in the he world. was. And then I remember, Drake said it himself. I remember Usher eight oh seven. Eight seven oh one. Yeah, 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 yeah. People love Confessions, but that first that adult one, album to me, more real niggas had eight oh seven oh one on CD. When I go home to Ohio, I still have it in my like top dresser. Like I open it, I still have it like the CD booklet and everything. Yeah. Like open it up and like look at them, just like. Yeah, this is the best Usher album I've ever heard in my life. So, yeah, bro. Um, those are my early my early music memories. And also hearing, like, I remember hearing Kanye stronger on the radio, like, mm. and being like, yo, this is, like, the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. Like, mm. just being like, a, being, like, a kid, teen, like, hearing that and being like, yo, this is, like, fresh. Like, this is, like, the, this is a moment. Like Music was also different. I hate to sound like an old head, but was. music was hitting different it at was. that time. So just it us was. being so young when it came out, it was just, like, and an you, experience. And you would have to, and you would have to catch music. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to catch it on the radio. Like, mm-hmm. nowadays, people are streaming and stuff. You can just go, oh, you got to hear something new. I still new. watch Love Island, y'all. Yeah, some <laughs> shit. Like, you want, if you want to, like, yeah, if you want to see something or hear something, you can just go stream it. Like, Back in the days, really, you had to catch it. Yeah. yeah, you had to be catch it. Like, oh shit, did you hear that? Yeah. I don't know if y'all used to do this, but um, when it was like the new hot songs, and you wanted a song as your ringtone, mm. putting the phone speaker oh, to the TV, yes. recording mm. it, then making it your ringtone. Because mm. again, like you said, if you didn't maybe couldn't use a computer, didn't have access to it, like you had to catch one hundred and sixty Park or catch mm-hmm. radio or catch whatever, but. It wasn't as easy. So. And don't make that damn noise, that staticky noise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you, to you, you had to record it right. Like you couldn't yep. be too close to the TV. Yep. Our era is so fire because so fire. Our era is so fire because we came up and we came up and just seen everything change. Like, bro, we we were there when iPods dropped. Mm-hmm. We're on the cusp. We're like, we were like, yeah, we're like, we was there when. I remember, bro, I can still remember seeing the first iPhone commercial, like, mm-hmm. literally. and they was all saying, hello, 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 and then at the end, it was like, 
iPhone. Hello. I was like, bro, oh my God, they're about to make phones? It was, yeah. yeah. So I just remember, like, yeah, bro, I still have my first iPod at home and stuff like that. And just, it, it, it's tight in our generation because we can, we've been from analog into digital. And yeah. now we're like, we're seeing it all, bro. We've seen it all. Yeah. So. <laughs> so we're all around the same age. So we all were around. Are we? To the 29? Yeah, we kinda, I'm kind of. Aren't you? You're 29 old. too. I'm 25. Girl, get out of here. Anyways, so we were all around around high school, college when the blog era really mm-hmm. popped off. Mm-hmm. Who were who were some of your like favorite artists within the blog era? And maybe not the obvious ones, some ones that maybe don't get talked about enough. And also, like, how did you feel like? Well, what styles did you adopt? Like, were you wearing Converse's because of Wiz Khalifa, <laughs> or were you wearing Snapback because of Tyga? Like, what, <laughs> what what was your blog era like? Will is gonna adopt this. My blog era, so, like, I will tell you the site I really went to a lot, too, especially because it was kind of based in the uh, Midwest. Um, you ever heard of Ill Roots? Yeah. Yeah. So I was a big Ill Roots fan. So, I mean, yeah, bro. And then, like, Wiz was in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was in Ohio. That's Midwest. Like, I remember going to a, a, one of Wiz's first shows in, in Cincinnati. It was in, like, a small, like, bar, no bigger than, like, this, like, type shit. And to see how big he became is yeah. is nuts. Um. I wasn't really a snack butt guy. I did. I wasn't a snack bag guy. I did have like cargos and stuff. I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't like. I, I just didn't like Converse's, bro. I don't mm. know. Like, I was never a big like Converse's guy. But for like artists, Nipsey, you mm. know, and, and a lot of people don't understand. Like, he's a blog era artist. He a is. lot of people don't. A lot of people, like, I remember like hearing like Killer with Drake and yeah. him, like, you know. And, like, Drake is, like, a, a blog era artist kind Absolutely. of, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So, especially, like, hearing his stuff early. I remember, bro, I remember being in high school and people telling me, yeah, the best rapper alive is uh, is uh, Jimmy from, uh, Jimmy from, I was like, bro, the nigga in the wheelchair? Because I never, I, I, I didn't, I never, I didn't watch the show, so I mm-hmm. thought. I thought the best rapper alive was really handicapped and like mm-hmm. in a in a like in a wheelchair <laughs> like like and they were talking about Drake this whole time. I'm just like, who is this guy? Like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, he's like, oh, niggas was like, yo, he's the best rapper alive. He's the best rapper alive. Mm-hmm. And then when every girl came out, yeah. nigga, crazy run. It, it was it was yeah. it was nuts, bro. I remember people playing it at like the. I remember people playing it at the at the lunch table and like literally, I'm just like. Oh, this is like amazing, amazing type like, and then da- diving deeper and like hearing replacement girl with Trey songs mm-hmm. and like all that those like shit. you feel me like all those type of all those type of moments in the blog era was so kind of crazy for me. Um, I kind of like Mac Miller. I liked. <sighs> you guys ever listen to Case of Casey Veggies? Yeah, yeah. yeah Casey Veggies was cool. That was a like very specific moment in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casey Veggies was cool. I'm trying to think. I think I interviewed him. Mm, that's fire. That's fire. I'm trying to think. What other what other blogger blogger artists did you guys? It was like? obviously like the J. Coles, the yeah. Kendricks, the yeah. uh, is Odd Future Odd Future popped in that time. So I would consider them blogger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um yeah, I felt Cur- that. currency. I must say they're all still talked about. Right yeah, now. that's yeah, the thing. Like, 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 the, they're all the ones. Currency was definitely yeah. I remember when I remember when Cur- I remember when currency and Wiz dropped that joint uh, that joint project and or the How Fly one. Uh, I feel like that was a moment in time mm-hmm. that was just yeah yeah. I hold I hold always hold that like close to my heart in like a music moment of like being like I'm a fan of this music shit for real. Yeah. So. Yeah, but you wasn't Wiz. trying to laugh like Wiz Khalifa or like you ain't dying here. <laughs> I, like, uh, I wasn't. He said, "Listen, I ain't a dick rider." Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. I, yeah, I wasn't the die die the hair guy. It was so. You know what's so crazy? You know what's so crazy? Before I moved to Ohio, I had an afro, like at least like this big. Like, yeah. It was like for real. And then like when I moved to Ohio, I cut it. I cut it all off. Okay. And then like I just I don't know I just I just I felt like it was time for a change. <laughs> if I would have still had that, I probably would have done. I would have fucked around with the dye shit. And, like <laughs> I would have done. That all shit the was whole nuts thing. to me. Yeah, niggas was wild. Yeah, nah, like niggas the dye shit was crazy. When they was laughing crazy. like him, 
That was too, that was too was much. Camo shorts, Converse's, snapbacks, Goodwood chains. Y'all remember the Goodwood chains? <laughs> yep. Bro, the Goodwood <laughs> chains. Niggas was wearing uh, the Diamond Supply, and yeah. that was like, I feel like that's when Supreme like first. You know what? The most I did probably is have some Diamond Supply, then probably had like a G-Shock. Mm, G-Shocks, yes, of That course. was a uniform, though, for yeah. our generation. Yeah, so. yeah. Right. yeah. G-Shocks were cool. You could pass. You know who I did like, and I, you got y'all make make y'all might make fun of me for it, but I I was I was a big Chance the Rapper fan. I'm not gonna judge you for that. Yeah, Ch- I was a big. Ch- Ch- I, I, I'll yeah. judge you. Yeah, I was a big I was a big Chance the Rapper fan. It was <laughs> it was close. Era, it was, was close. Great. It was like Midwest shit. It was just like close. It well, was, yeah, it was like watching it. I was like, oh damn, like this nigga's about to blow. Like mm-hmm. at first it was just like some nigga that just screamed on the mic and like you know <laughs> then it started all coming together and to see mm-hmm. it to see it happen it was kind of it was kind of dope. Yeah. It was cool yeah. to see. <clears throat> when did, because I know you talk about how you kind of did photography first before you got into music. So how did you get interested in, in photography and what caused the transition to working in music? Okay. Um, I really got into photo because I'm just, I don't know, bro. I love, I love movies. I mean, you see the way I kind of talk about movies and just talk about visual stuff. I'm a big, I'm a big visual guy. So I always, um, I, I always kind of wanted to get into it. I remember. I remember in Minnesota, I actually had a, I had a good friend. We used to make, like, fake movies, like, just some kid shit. So looking back on it, I guess I always was kind of into filming and, like, making stuff and, 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 and shooting and stuff like that. Um, yeah, one day I just, you know, I, 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 got, I bought a camera for, like, my 18th birthday mm-hmm. and then just started shooting. Um, I worked with this brand called Ohio Against the World. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Period. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And the brand actually, the brand blew up. I'll tell you the story about that later. Um. But I was working with them. Uh. We had a show. We did a. We did a. We did a collab show with another brand in um in Columbus um called Animal House, the one that I work with now. Yes. Um. My homie Jordy. They were throwing a show, and um. Yeah, I was just taking pictures at the show and stuff, but. I would just always see niggas backstage and look hella important. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be like them (laughs) niggas. And I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be around the artists and like, just be, just be in the, you know, in the mix, Mm -hmm. you know, in the mix for real. So that's how I really got into, uh, got into the music thing. Just, you know, I went backstage and started talking to Jordy and like, oh, like he realized, oh, like you're kind of like dope. And oh, you take these cool photos and oh, you want to, you want to be you want to be around this shit for the right reasons and also it was it was around that time that a lot of people weren't shooting film i was mm-hmm. like i was like the only person really shooting film mm-hmm. yeah. especially in ohio and like doing my thing and like getting portraits of like uzi and getting portraits of like all these different like cool artists and like just you know a lot of people weren't doing that mm-hmm. and i was i was i was up there doing that and you know, we we saw a connection, me and Jordy, and then like the other person we were working with, my boy Chris Mars B, he was a DJ for Animal House, and you know, we kind of created a synergy of like, oh, you know, we want to, we want to, we want to be early on artists because that's that's our thing. We want to be early on artists, and we want to bring them to these places like Columbus or Cincinnati early before a lot of people. So you know, we booked we booked Uzi early, we booked Kendrick Lamar early. Um, Chance, Nipsey, um, you know, kind of any post Malone, like stuff like that, early, very early. So, you know, if you go back, for, if, if a lot of people, they should be like, when they go through my Instagram, they go back for them. They're like, bro, you have like photos of everybody. You have like post Malone <laughs> playing with a cat. Like, <laughs> like you have, you have portraits of like, you know, Rihanna threw the car at, at, at Rolling Loud or like even Forrest Whitaker, like this was this is some New York shit, but at the same time, like having those type of photos where people are like, Wow, you really be trying to like capture some shit. And I need to get back on it. I just been whatever, but yeah. Been busy. <laughs> yeah, I'd be busy. And I but I really love the photo shit. So also it's just expensive too, trying to like do the film and like I tried to develop yeah. on my own for a long time, but like nigga, that's so time consuming. Mm. Like I'm just like yeah so well, that's cool as hell i ain't even know all that shit i'm sitting here like wow well <laughs> yeah i mean i mean when i <laughs> you know the craziest the craziest moment of my photo career is you know we moved to new york we did some work for atlantic records they they, they linked us with uzi for like 
four days he was just locked in so we went to a show in connecticut you know after the show uzi was running out from fans i told him can i get a photo real quick he posed and did like this little whatever and take the photo cool fast forward three months atlanta's gonna hit me like yeah spotify they're doing these new things called built like they're doing like this is like the first time they were doing like the spotify billboards mm -hmm. and they was like yo um yeah they're about to choose your photo for the billboard <laughs> and i was like wait Fire. what <laughs> they were like yeah like it's gonna be three cities it's in la um atlanta and new york and um yeah that shit was crazy bro because like that's the type of thing like i didn't move to new york thinking um yeah i want to get a billboard and mm -hmm. do this and that like that type of shit was like outside of my mind so yeah. like when it happened i wasn't even at home i was think i was on the road somewhere and i just remember i remember calling my dad and like getting emotional like yo like there's a billboard of like my photo in yep. new york city and i remember people calling me and taking pictures of it and like everything so the photo career has been pretty decent. Mm -hmm. It's been yeah. pretty decent. I need to get back on it. I actually, I actually love it for real. <clears throat> yeah, and that's the beauty of the journey of a creator is like we get our minds trained on specific things. But for me personally, I don't want to speak for y'all, but the things that I've achieved that I didn't plan to initially, <laughs> they feel so much better than the things mm -hmm. that I... Absolutely. Like the mm -hmm. stuff that was my light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. everything I've done to get closer to that light at the end of the tunnel has been like so gratifying. It's so, so crazy, bro. Yeah. It's dope that, you know, you came to New York, plan to do one thing, well, and then yeah. you get this in yeah. billboards. Like, it's like yeah, it's <laughs> like, pictures on billboards. That's nuts. Yeah, it's like, I, I mean, I wanted to come and take photos and like be around, you know, just be in the mix and, and, and do stuff like that. But that happening and that happening like so fast. And I feel like that was like maybe the, third year i was living in new york or mm -hmm. maybe the second year i was living in new york and then also to see where the spotify billboard shit is now how yeah. how important how big it is and how important like they put it on that one building in times square yeah. like it wasn't there when it first when they first did it was on like the one of those like side side billboard mm -hmm. it was digital but at the same time it just wasn't that and to see and to see and know and like spot people at Spotify tell me it's like bro you had like you had one of the first five Spotify billboards when we was doing that for artists and That's I was fire. like damn like yeah so it was dope bro it was dope Absolutely. and also the things you've done for your hometown like bringing those mm -hmm. artists mm -hmm. early on like mm -hmm. that's fire mm -hmm. and propelled you to even come to New York yeah yeah, yeah. what were, what was what, aside from that major thing with Spotify like. You know, New York is viewed as the place where people come to achieve their dreams. That's why we have the transplants who are here, <laughs> which Facts. we talked about Facts. so so affectionately. I like some of y'all. <laughs> but... Well, I'm warming up for y'all. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, New York, like L.A., um, I think Atlanta is even growing into a place where people see that they can go to, you know, get their careers popping. But, you know, I think people have this expectation of what New York can be, and they see the reality. So, like, those early times in new york like what what was that like for you early times in new york was bro it was amazing bro I, I actually i actually find myself trying to grasp the feeling again mm. and i can't because it's it was just a moment in time it's like it's just it's just it's gone bro i'm just yeah. older i've been here for a long a while yeah. it's just different i can't mm. i can't grab i can't grasp the type of feeling you know um and to what Miss To Be said, you know, bringing artists early to Ohio and places like that, you know, we did that, but that's another reason we moved to New York too, because you know we had the glass ceiling in Ohio. There's only yeah. so much you can do. There's no labels. I can't go down to Atlantic Records or RCA Records down the street in, yeah. in yeah. Ohio. So you know that's why we came here and we 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 wanted to do the same thing we was doing doing in Ohio, just in New York City, because New York City there is no glass ceiling. It's to see how far you can take it sky's the limit here yeah. um so like first moving here the first few years you know we was just trying to establish what we was doing back there so you know we created the party third shift um which is the extension of animal house just just a party series for new york city so like we wanted to play on the idea of you know it's a third shift it's you're out late with your friends mm -hmm. gonna be you know you, you don't know what you're gonna see at the party so we um one of the first things we did with third shift is you know we just do a regular party then we started to bring artists in and like people saw what we did with nebuchadnezzar um and people were like oh wow like so like you guys like bringing artists through and like 
pretty much just giving that feeling of, I don't know what I'm going to go out and see tonight, but I know if I'm going to a third shift, I'm going to be a movie. Gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a movie. So mm-hmm. yeah, that was, those were the first, those was the first years of us, of, of us living here and me living here, you know, running around, taking photos, um, anywhere I can, you know, also New York is so crazy, bro. I, I remember mm-hmm. I was, New York is so crazy. It was Halloween, bro. I was outside chilling on the block. I think chilling on the block had my camera. I think I was smoking. Some lady walked by. She's like, oh, I see you have a camera. Oh, let me check your work. Boom. Actually, you know, I'm shooting high fashion two weeks later. That's crazy. Shooting high, shooting, working with a high fashion brand, which was, which was crazy. It was, the brand's not around anymore, but the, 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 the places they put me in, the things I was doing, like, it was, it was nuts. It was, um, it was something that I just didn't know was going to happen. Didn't experience just like one of those things. It just wasn't planned. I was just chilling. Yeah. New York is that special that, Somebody might walk up on you and like change your life or like a job or like whatever because it's just it's New York City. It's amazing. Literally the land of opportunity. Yeah. Somebody feel free to walk up on me, child. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm free. I, I need facts. I'm, I'm in Brooklyn. I need somebody. To, yeah, I need somebody to walk on me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right now, but like, yeah, bro. Like those were the first. Those were the first years, and also like establishing connections and relationships with like people um, from like getting cool and meeting like i met i met flea and like cash and them like my first few years living in new york so Mm -hmm. a lot of people think we just met or like this and that but like i kind of know him for a while um meeting people at labels and meeting people at just different entities and 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 jobs and different circles and statures of of new york city and like that's what makes it amazing here that you can just there's so many different circles and so many different um I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I guess just circles. So many different circles and so many different things you can get into. You just don't. It's it's the world is your oyster type of thing for real here. Yeah. So. And you've made it a point to immerse yourself in New York City and all the opportunity that it brings. And, you know, like I said, when I introduced you in the first episode, you're super tapped in with artists and constantly giving them platforms. And one way that you do that is through your playlisting at Apple Music. How did that opportunity come together? What's that experience been like, and how, how long have you been there? Bro, I think I've been I've been there like damn near like three and a half years. Um, you know what? How it how it came about is one of my first homies, Maine. He was working. He was doing it. Uh, I think you know Maine. Uh, oh yeah, mainstream. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jermaine, my he guy. he was doing it before me, and you know, I was just my ear was always to the streets, and it's like. I, you know, I had this thing called Streets Inside the Summer, mm-hmm. and uh, I used to always just be feeding him, like, yo, put this on there, you gotta put this on there, you gotta do this, and you gotta do that, and he's just like... You gotta take, well. take it over yourself. <laughs> he was like, it didn't work, and then, like, so then, like, yeah, and then, and then like, you know, and then, you know what happened, too, um, when Pop Smoke was coming out, mm-hmm. and... Yo, happy birthday, Pop, I know his, 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 his birthday was just recently passed, Absolutely. and we got, we got kind of close and I was working close with Steven Victor in them mm. and after going to that studio session and me shooting that video of pop and like uh, the reaction to him making Dior in that in there and then me bringing him to Dykeman I think like two weeks later I brought him to because like I, I was going to Dykeman games and I got cool with like I got cool with um, Nea mm. and she she helps run just artist relations up there and I was like yo I want to bring pot smoke up here. And they were like, what? I was like, yeah, we can, let's do it. Made it happen. Um, it was funny. Cause they was like, do they want, like, he, like, does he want to perform? I'm like, I don't think he wants to perform. Like he can't nah, perform. Like, like, this is crazy. Like, it was just like, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was funny because they were like all stressed out and like scared. And all he did was stay up at the top and perform up there. And everybody else was singing the lyrics. It was crazy. It was, it was, it was amazing. God rest his soul. Him, yeah. Uh, God rest his soul. Yeah. Fast. God rest oh, his soul. Man. So you like, they just people like Maine knew, and then my homie Zini knew. They was like nobody be kind of like paying attention to what's going on in New York, and then also has a track record of being kind of right of mm-hmm. what's next than than me. So they kind of they just get, they said you want to do. I was like hell yeah, and they was like they hired at that time they hired like uh, they hired like five people to do new regional playlists. I was the only person with two playlists that mm-hmm. in two of the biggest playlist regions. So like the new East Coast and the new New York. Yeah. Um, 
and it's been going it's been going good pretty since bro like you know a lot of people at first i didn't think it mattered that much not not matter that much but i didn't think it held that much weight but then people started showing me like after i add their playlists and show me their numbers they're like yo thank you bro like you increased my shit by 500 mm-hmm. percent or this and that or you know the moment the moment that i spice gave gave my gave the playlist and just what i say a lot of validity just yeah. because it was like oh he was putting her out there early and like she like really popped popped. like it was like i was like i mean yeah it's like i and 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 i don't i don't try to take credit for her popping or none of that or anything just because it the level she's at it takes way more than just being on a playlist yeah right so yeah but i know what you're saying yeah 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 yeah, because munch was on world star right yeah yeah Yeah. munch was on world star but you know i was i was there i was there from the jump and i remember i remember telling her bro i remember telling her i was like yo Cause she did. I think I think the video's deleted now because it was like one of her first songs, but it was actually fire to me. And I remember telling her, I was like, "Yo, keep dropping. You know, your shit's hard. You know, I'm gonna throw this on the playlist. Just keep doing your thing." And you know, she hit back as hit back instantly. Said thank you. And you know, that's where relationship started. Where you know, she started asking, "Yo, can you? What do you think about this song? Can you put this song on there? Can you do this and that?" And I would tell her, "Yes, no, and just keep going." And then you know, I was remember asking her. I remember asking her, yo, you know, we're waiting on an album, waiting on this and that. And like to see where it's at now, where her album's about to come out is mm-hmm. kind of, it's just nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. Very, it's very full circle. Yeah. No, it's, it's beautiful to see the, the growth of an artist. Like I remember years ago when like Coyla Ray's team would be hitting me directly to get on the small blog I was working on. Mm-hmm. And then years later, you see her mm-hmm. coming to national, you know, national nationally recognized no, act yeah. so it should be crazy bro yeah that's when dope. carrie was still writing for the source and he did his source interview with bryson tiller mm-hmm. i was still an intern and we like at the end of the interview was walking in midtown with bryson like no security <laughs> just casually after the interview and carrie just told me pull up because he knew i loved bryson and the yeah. album was out for like two weeks and mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. seeing him now is insane yeah 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 what do you want your legacy to be when it's all said and done, when people are talking about Will Foster, mm. what do you want your legacy to be? Mm. That's heavy, my boy. Right? I'm like, how old are you, Will? Like... <laughs> <laughs> you asking serious? You asking seriously how old I am? Low key. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm 32. Like, I'm, I'm like, 32. yeah, you can't be thinking about that shit now. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a heavy question. Nah. I feel like everything we do, no, no. it goes to it. Yeah. yeah, it goes to it. I mean, bro, honestly, bro, <clears throat> I just want, I want my legacy to be genuine, mm-hmm. and I want my legacy to, like, I want it to be genuine, but I also want it to affect people in a genuine way. Mm-hmm. I guess, uh, and, and I know that's kind of, I don't mean maybe it's not confusing, but it's, I'm just trying to flush out the idea. But yeah, bro, I just wanted I just want people to be like, yo, he was he was genuine, and you know, he helped me where he could, mm-hmm. and I and that's that's why I like to do a lot. Like I mean, you see, I like to help artists, I like to help um, connect the dots and be a provider of whatever you know you need. I need to be. Um, yeah, bro. I just want to be. I want my legacy to be genuine. Mm. That's some. That's some. That's some. That's some real shit. I can't lie to you. I haven't yeah. really thought about it. I need to think about it more. But yeah, I think I want it. I want it to be that. A lot of niggas is frauds out here. So that's solid. Yeah. 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 I want my legacy to be genuine. <clears throat> niggas could. Niggas could say whatever. But if you're not genuine, then all the other shit don't matter. So. Uh, yeah. Mm. I, uh, yeah. A lot of. A lot of. A lot of. A lot of. Yeah. A lot of. Sh- a lot of people do not. If their motives don't come from a genuine place or mm-hmm. a lot of people are doing things for the other thing to get there you know what i'm saying and i i just never been that person and you know a lot of a lot of artists that i work with you know that's what they usually say it's like well you just you know you're really genuine my boy and really you know this and that and it's like yeah especially like especially when people ask to be on their playlist and they think it has it comes with something else i'm always just like no i'm just gonna like throw it on there bro yeah it's good. I like it. It's not like you don't gotta pay me. I'm not gonna. 
I'm clutch. One, I'm not even supposed to be doing that. Yeah. If they found out I was like, that's payola, y'all. <laughs> yeah. If I was, if they found out, if they found out I was doing that, I would be fired so fast. Like it's just like, yeah, bro. I just want to be genuine. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons that I've, I gravitated toward you in the group chat of many mm -hmm. niggas is just because, like, I could tell you liked music. Like, mm -hmm. you didn't yes. seem too cool for anything. You didn't seem too super critical or know-it-all yeah. of everything. Like, you just, you liked what you liked. You put niggas on to shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, like, I fuck with that because that's kind of how I am, too. Like, yeah. like, I don't know. I don't. It's, I've, although I've been able to do some cool things, mm -hmm. which are exciting, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm too cool for anyone yeah. or anything. Yeah. So, you yeah, know man. what, Ar you know what, Armand, I I, I, I was telling my girlfriend this, and I think I was talking to someone else about it. I was like, you know, Armand, he's always just himself, and it's very. He really, you know what, you know what, I wish I could adopt from you a little bit more. You really don't give a fuck what niggas think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It took me a while to get. I, there, I mean, I'll yeah, I mean the it way took you. Me a while. You told. I mean, I think you told us about it. Just like. From going to therapy and doing stuff like that, yeah. like you really built up your your mental to the point where it's like, yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty locked into who you are, yeah. and that shit is that shit is special, bro. It's just, it's special to be to be locked into who you are and know who you are, because a lot of people don't, bro. Yeah. And that shit is that shit is rough. Yeah, man. That shit is tough. It's yeah. hard. Yeah, the, the internet be eating away at niggas. Yeah, it'd like, be, yeah, bro. It'd be like. <laughs> Changing their perception of reality. Yeah, bro. They want to be stars on the internet, but nothing to offer in real life. Man. They care more about followers and dollars and mm -hmm. actual emotion. Mm -hmm. And me, it was just like, yeah, bro. It, it even, it, I don't even feel like I have a huge following, but it took me time to get motion on the internet. But one thing in real life, I had motion. Even, Hello? Even, even when Talk I was, about it. Even when I was a freelance writer, mm -hmm. right, Talk about writing it. at the smallest blog, the biggest blog, whatever, like, no. niggas could not deny what I was doing in real it's life. It's crazy, real bro. It's crazy, bro, because a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people know me from Twitter, and it's mm -hmm. like, I don't really, in one, uh, it's crazy because my face is not even on there. People just know, like, my, like my shit, the way mm -hmm. I, and I never thought of it, like, like I was like building like some big brand or mm -hmm. like whatever. I was just being myself, genuine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, on and off, you going. This is how it's about to be. Like I'm like I always always change the the Kanye line where I'd be like I'm on Twitter talking like it's just you and me. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So True. it's very it's it's very that and people uh, the way people put things on a pedestal on the internet is yeah. like nuts, bro. It's too much. Like, I'm a regular Cringe. person, bro. Like yeah. we're a regular like regular people bro and yeah. just not like yeah some of us are funny some of us are this and that some mm -hmm. of us got like right. everybody's different bro everybody got superpowers though like it's like and we are like, everybody shows in a different way so yeah absolutely well i feel like although there's probably still a lot more with you <laughs> that we could get into i hope you listeners learn something about will 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 the person not just will the playlist curator the college football 25, damn near, this nigga needs to get paid for the marketing he's doing for college football 25. Seriously, can I get some game codes? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, you know, learning where he's come from, early music memories, early career goals, and photography, playlisting, Apple Music, management, of course, managing one of the hottest artists in New York City right now. I um, mean, you'll continue to get to know him throughout the season, but I just wanted to give you all that opportunity to get to know the person because, yes, we have our titles, we have our music opinions, but we're human beings. Yes. Who do other things and feel other things. And I think that's the most important thing for y'all to remember about us. So thank you for giving us that time to right? get to know well, you. Well, I feel like yeah. I learned so much about you. Yeah. Like, if you want to train, if you want like another little sister throw in the mix to train <laughs> and do something, I volunteer myself. And there's another episode of Stay Busy with Armand Sad that we hope y'all enjoyed. And getting to know Will Foster a little bit. Next week, we will have a full Miss 2Bs interview for you. So I'm sure sh you, know, you know what's coming, Miss 2Bs. You you already know what the yes. energy going to be. You already know. But she got a great story. Someone who's inspired me for a while. So can't wait for y'all to hear it in full. Um, chat was hefty. A lot. A lot to it. So any thoughts y'all had on the chat, let us know. Also, the question about Drake's signature songs. If you have any thoughts on that, let us know on social media what you think his signature songs are. Shout out to the Twitter account who posted that. It's called uh, at Aubrey's Attorney. Yes, there are bigger Drake fans than me. So, yeah. so I thought it would have came from Word on Road. <laughs> Word on shit. There's, there's a couple of accounts you, 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 you can link that to. But for myself, for Mr. B's, and for Will Foster, we always want you to stay safe, stay humble, stay busy.